Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! was called Project Fear, it's rapidly becoming Project Fact. But what needs to happen before people realise that we are perhaps hurtling towards a terrible mistake? How much would your weekly shop have to cost before you think, actually, I don't know what we want our country back means anymore. I, I just want my groceries back. I just want my ability to afford a tank full of petrol back. I just want my life back to what it was like before all these people filled me with fear and loathing of foreigners and prompted me to vote for a, well, hectic, harebrained lurch towards a cliff edge. Or have you got some optimism that can dampen my pessimism? Pessimism, that's not quite the right word. It's probably closer to saying complete befuddlement. And what's happening now is, is you know those stages of grief that you have? What you have now on the pro leave side is, is the delusional stage, where they are literally telling you that the, that the earth is flat and that the moon is made of cheese. A, a, a plummeting pound is great. It's really good for exports. and Because people are so desperate not to feel stupid, not to feel that they've made a terrible mistake. They, they buy this, even though they don't know what it means. This is the most funny thing. When you say, it's good for ex exports. It's about when people used to say, the same people used to say, 75% of our laws are made in Brussels. And you'd say, name one. And they'd go, meh, meh, meh. And they couldn't. And now you say, it's good for exports. And you say, what does that mean? And they go, meh, meh. No idea what, what what's good for exports means. Does 5p a litre rise in the cost of your petrol go up? Does that make sense? Do you know what that means? Yeah, I do actually know what that means, James. That means I'm going to have to pay more for petrol. What does good for exports mean? Don't know. Actually don't know. And that's where we are now. Seriously, that's where we are. I don't buy this 66 billion quid a year on the front page of the Times. I presume that's a worst case scenario. But my God, how does that play into the uh, narrative that we saw before the vote? There's an idea that both sides were telling lies. They weren't. One side was making predictions that haven't come immediately true. There is a huge difference between saying the sun won't come up tomorrow and saying here is 350 million quid right now you can have it and then tomorrow comes and the sun does come up. That means you were wrong when you made your prediction. To make an actual lie, to say that we have 350 million pounds to spend on the NHS or to say that we'll be economically better off or to say that we can do our own trade, these were actual lies that were told. Massive difference, and yet people determined not to see it. The difference between a prediction that doesn't come true and an actual lie that you have to disown and disavow within minutes of the vote being made. All of these people saying, well, uh, we always said we were going to leave the single market. I, I've just been speaking to an old friend of mine who voted to stay, voted to leave the European Union and passionately, passionately opposes the idea that we leave the European single market. There are people who voted to leave who are happy with freedom of movement. That's going out of the window. And why do you think the pound has gone through the floor? It's really very simple because the international business community, the markets, now believe, after the Conservative Party conference, that Theresa May is going to feed the, 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 the chomping lion of ignorant nationalism rather than address the economic needs of the country. That's what they now believe. That's what hard Brexit means. I don't care if we bleed, we're going to have to do it. And then, of course, if I had encouraged you over the last few months, years, decades, if I'd encouraged you to commit an act of epic self-harm, if I had actually told you these lies, if I was the one making up nonsense about 75% of laws and made up uh, statistics and, and, and claims and, oh, refugees are awful, oh, grrr, Turkey's going to join the EU, Turkey's going to join the EU, we're going to have an army. These were disprovable. These were absolute lies. There's no way Turkey could join the EU unless we agreed to it, and there's no way the European Union ever could have had an army unless we agreed to it. But lie, 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 lie. I'm so desperate to believe it. And that's what people like me struggle to understand, the desperation to believe it, the need to believe it, rather than just sort of saying, well, you know, I'm not passionately really on either side of this particular debate, but 
I, I'm, I'm going to go with the wisdom. I'm going to go with the cleverness. I'm going to go with the proven knowledge. I'm going to go with the experts, some of whose predictions will turn out to be true and some of whose predictions will turn out not to be. And now, of course, I, I, I'll check the box of trolls in a minute. Now, of course, you'll get the shut up, shut up, shut up, accept the result and move on. Shut up, Ramonas, Ramonas, shut up. Leave it, leave it. Stop telling the truth. Stop talking about things that I've actually caused to happen. Please let me persist in my ignorant bliss that it's not my fault at all. And then it moves on to the next level. My favourite level, which is all the people that said this was going to be bad, are now responsible for it being bad. This is the talking the country down school of Brexit. And it's a thing of beauty. So what you've got, you've got two people, right, describing the future. One of them says it's going to be bad, one of them says it isn't. And then it is bad. And the one who said it wouldn't be bad blames it on the one who said it would be bad. This is what talking the country down means, or talking the pound down. Absolutely remarkable. <sighs> good for exports. It is good for exports if you're an exporter. I'm sure we'll speak to a couple. Are you an exporter? How is it good for you to be paying five pence a litre more for your petrol? How is it good for you to be looking at parity almost with the dollar? It just isn't. And, and I know I'm not going to be able to do this, because I've, I've made it too difficult myself over the years. It, 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 I, I can't. That's why I, why I work here most of the time, and not at the BBC, because I, 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 I value my ability to hold an opinion. But the thing I just don't get is, is the, the absence. You see it with Trump as well. It's as if someone is showing you an apple, and you are swearing blind it's an orange. Why, why does that come from? Because, unfortunately, all you get when you're a lily-livered liberal like me, all you're left with is xenophobia. There is nothing else. It's as if people would rather obey a bad law that they think is somehow British than a good law that's been made in a committee that included some foreigners, maybe even a German. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And what you've got now, you've seen it in your own life, you'll see it on social media, an absolute determination not to listen. I, I can't. I can't watch this. I can't read it. I can't listen to it. Because I did it. I made this happen. These are the people who've spent their entire adult lives being encouraged to blame anybody else for their problems. Blame immigrants. Blame the unemployed. Blame people on benefits. Blame lefties. Blame them. Blame this. Blame them. And now they're looking at a catastrophe entirely of their own making. And they don't know what to do. They've got no vocabulary for it. Hang on a minute. We can't blame Brexit on immigrants because we voted for it as a way of hating on them. We can't blame Brexit on lefties. Well, maybe we could blame it on Jeremy Corbyn, but not in the way that we need to in order to shore up the notion that we've not done something completely stupid. How can we do this? How are we going to do this? How can we possibly describe the catastrophe that seems to be coming in a way that allows us to lay blame at the feet of the usual suspects? Let's blame it on benefit claimants. Let's blame it on benefit claimants we can't blame it on benefit claimants. They haven't caused Brexit. Can't blame it on immigrants. Can't blame it on lefties. Who the hell can we blame it on? Answer nobody. You can only blame it on yourself. So they never, ever will. You never, ever will blame it on yourself. So now you have to pretend that you... Look at the front of the mail. The front of the mail is a masterpiece today. It's got a piece about the bloke who runs JCB pulling out of the CBI. And what you normally do when you're a journalist doing a story like that... You, you, you look for, you know, someone with real clout, someone who's really sort of playing their A-game at the moment, a top-of-the-league economist or a top-of-the-league commentator. They quote some bloke who founded a financial services company in the fourth paragraph of the story. That's all they could find to back up the idea that leaving the CBI, because they are still Eurosceptic, I beg your pardon, Euro-friendly, um, is a good thing for a businessman to do. So the whole of the Daily Mail's resources have gone into finding an, quote, expert, because, of course, experts are okay when they agree with you, finding an expert to say it's a good idea for the head of JCB to pull out of the CBI. A anyone will do. Find me an expert. They get a bloke who founded a financial services company, but as far as I can tell from the story, is now retired. And then you get the other line, oh, it's going to be tough. Next few years are going to be tough. But we knew that. You didn't know that. You told me it was going to be great straight away. You told me that Project Fear saying it was going to be tough was lies. So lining up to say, oh, we knew it was going to be tough. And what's at the end of it? What's at the end of it? The, mad, the world's gone mad. 03456060973 is the number you need to call now. If you're prepared yet, and I, I suspect you're probably not, to admit that you got it wrong. What would it take, do you think, for you personally to admit that you got it wrong? I would 
cautiously suggest that if you're rational, you're close to it now. But if your vote was built on xenophobia and emotion, you never can and you never will. If you're completely rational, the fact that your shopping is going to go up, the fact that the pound is tanking, and the fact that your petrol is going to go up by 5p a litre should be the point under any other circumstances. It should be the point at which you go, oh, blow it. I've really got that one wrong. Imagine if there was a Labour Chancellor in number 11 Downing Street at the moment and petrol was going up by 5p. For now, this is according to the Petrol Retailers Association, by the way, it's not, it's not me making it up. If you, uh, uh, if, if you had a Labour Chancellor in Downing Street at the moment and petrol was going up by 5p a litre, what do you think the front pages would look like? If it was Gordon Brown, for example, what do you think the sun would look like today. They'd even have done one of their hilarious pictures, wouldn't they? Or, or, or have got him dressed up like a petrol pump attendant or something like that. And that is where we are now as a country. Front page of the Daily Mail quotes a bloke who once founded a financial services company as the fount of all economic knowledge, ignores and demonises Mark Carney and the editor of the Financial Times. That's where we are. And I guess people like me just can't quite see through the woods. Just can't quite get why this willful ignorance has taken hold in the way that it has. And, and you're left with the really sad conclusion that it is just xenophobia. That, that, that it is all about the idea that a really good law with a German fingerprint on it is not something you want to obey. You'd much rather obey bad laws with British fingerprints all over them. And, and I don't even know what that means. 03456060973 is the number to call. Right, I asked for an exporter who tell us things are great. I think Michael in Banstead is stepping up to the plate. Michael, are you an exporter? Yes, I am. So things are good for you? Good morning, James. <coughs> uh, yeah, well, you, you know, I mean, um, the, last, the last few years have been fairly torrid, but... I would say um, the power, the strength of the pound, uh, you know, when it went sort of to parity three years ago, four years ago, that helped us out. And oh, it's, now, it's the lowest it's ever been. It's the, it's the lowest it's been since 1985 at the moment. Is it really? I thought it went down to, uh, I thought it was lower three or four years ago. I'm sure no, it was. No, mate. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Look, you know, I mean, we've... Uh, remember, remember uh, you've we've, got an important job here. It's, it's, and, and we are slightly unfashionably interested in facts, but but in, in, in terms of the dollar, it, it, uh, 35 years. Oh, no, I'm, I'm referring to the euro. Oh, okay. The euro was uh, lower, wasn't it? So, yeah, I mean, it, it has helped us, if I'm honest with you, you know. And, what what uh, do you export? Print, print, use print machinery. Yeah, very, uh, un, un, you know, unfashionable product, but, um, you know, I mean, uh, there's a market for it in the third world and I mean a lot uh, to be honest with you a lot of uh, your, your ability to sell to the third world isn't affected at all by European Union membership is it? Well no I suppose it is by nature of the strength of the You're uh, already doing dollar. it are you? That's because the dollar's, the dollar's been affected by Brexit isn't it? Is it this, is, that's kind of where you're going with this isn't it? So um, um, yeah news, that has helped me. News print itself so you didn't need to leave the EU to, to, to trade with the third world you have a temporary boost hopefully temporary boost to your coffers because most people would like to see really the, the pound and the dollar. Say so again? I don't think really rationally it's going to affect us at all um, you know the uh, leaving the EU because I mean our market's sort of uh, strong in the Commonwealth and um you know, you know, I was looking. I, you know, it's not your fault. This. I, I, I'm glad you've rung in, but I was looking for someone who thought their life was going to get better as a result of this. Not someone who's just. My life has got better. Oh, good. I've got more money coming in. If, right. if you can gauge it on that. But, but you've got more pounds coming in. I did vote. I did vote to leave the EU. Yes. But you know what? I'm not a xenophobe. Okay. No, of course you're not. I, don't, I Absolutely, you're not. You did it for economic reasons. I'm of Jewish origin, okay, and, um, you know, so is my family, obviously, my wife and uh, everything else. You don't, you don't have to justify it to me. I've got friends and family who voted to leave. They don't have a xenophobic bone in their bodies. They just no, thought that the stuff about money was true and the economic arguments were true. I listen to you most mornings, James, and your narrative is kind of, uh, you know, you're, you're really just as bad as the right-wing press that you are. I am, I know, except for one big difference. You know, I tell the truth. Well, I don't know. I mean, you, 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 you tell the truth according to James, don't you? I mean, no, no, no. I tell the truth according to facts, numbers, evidence. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'll give you another one. You're, you're, you're superb at debating. No, no, no. I'm not superb at debating. I'm just. I'm superb at remembering stuff. You're, you're, you're 
superiority over debating is far greater than mine, so I'm not going to enter that. You well, know. you can't. That's silly, mate. You can't say you know more than I do, so I'm, I can't have an argument with you. I didn't say I know more than you do. What did you say, then? I said you're, I said you're, 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 you're a superior debater than I am. Oh, so it's not the facts that work, it's the I way I present them. We, uh, you know, you phoned up, uh, or I phoned in about exporting, and it's been great for me. And you know what? The money I, the extra money I bring in, which isn't a whole, whole amount. How much you know, do you think it is? Huge amount. Um, I would say probably uh, uh, profit is going to be about fifty percent. But bearing in mind last year we virtually ran on a loss, um, it, you know, it doesn't count for much. But that money will go into the economy. And like when the cost it, of you know? fuel goes up doesn't really affect me. I've got an economic That's all right, then. You're all right, Jack. It's 18 minutes after 10. Running a business that exports print machinery without having to pay for petrol. That's an astonishing line of work you're in there. The dollar <laughs> versus the pound is at an almost all-time low, and yet some people who encouraged us to leave the European Union are now claiming they knew this would happen. They could have told us that, because right? when anybody before the referendum vote said that this might damage the pound, they were accused of indulging in Project Fear. Now the pound has been damaged, possibly a lot more seriously than, than at any point in recent memory. The people who encouraged us to leave are coming out and saying, oh, this is actually a good thing. So just, just think about that. I, obviously, these in conversations are impossible uh, in some ways because you are just fighting feelings with facts. But just think about that. If you're cross with me this morning already, job done. If you're cross with me already this morning, then just think about this. Before the referendum, the people who told you that the pound would tank were liars indulging in Project Fear, right? After the referendum, the people who told you that the pound wouldn't tank are telling you that it's a good thing it has and that it had to happen. So you get these words being thrown around now, like, uh, oh, well, the pound was overvalued. We need to devalue the pound. And you, you'll see people repeating that on the comment forums. On the, on the newspaper websites. We, yes, we needed to devalue the pound. They haven't got a clue what they're talking about, these people. Not a clue. Absolutely clear. They're just repeating the words of some senior pro-leave campaigners who are desperately hoping that people like me stop talking about this. Because otherwise, it's going to become increasingly difficult for them to shore up the notion that they knew what they were doing. And it's exactly the same principle. Exactly the same principle as that old line about the 75% of our laws come from Brussels. Well, could you name one? No, I can't name one, but I'm furious about it. Uh, exports are up. How does that help me as someone who's going to pay more for petrol? Even the price of the Daily Mail went up by 10 pence on Saturday. They kept that one a little quiet. Well, I mean, as quiet as you can when it's printed on the cover of the paper. Pr price of the Daily Mail went up by 10 pence on Saturday, which will be linked to the rise in the cost of newsprint. Everywhere you look, you're going to pay more. I'm fine, Jack. This is the whole point of my politics. It's always been about protecting people who perhaps are a little less fortunate than myself. Who's going to suffer more if petrol goes up by 5p a litre? Someone who's got a few quid in the bank or someone who hasn't? Seriously, who, who's going to suffer more if food prices go up? The wealthy person or the less wealthy person? And the reason why I sometimes describe the utter befuddlement that we feel when we look at a situation like this is that the people who are going to suffer more were more likely to vote for it. The people who are economically vulnerable live in areas that came out to leave the European Union on a scale that those of us who are not economically vulnerable didn't. It's insane. You're going to be worse off. But you voted for it, so no wonder you wish that the debate would go away and people would just shut up. David's in Watford. David, what would you like yeah, to well, say? You, 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 you said job done, and it is job done. You have made me angry this morning, James, so well done. It's and the, I know it's it's the facts, David, it's the facts that have made you angry. The fact that the petrol's going up, the fact you're going to have to pay more for your food, the fact that the economy is in really quite dire straits, and of course what's merely made you angry is the fact that you voted for it. No, I voted for it. It, for, for, for reasons, and this is why I'm angry with you for your introduction this morning, because it doesn't really become you um, to, mm. believe, to believe that everybody voted on economic grounds. I, I've never been a rich person um, in my entire life, and I will continue that way to the day I drop dead. Well, you're going to be poorer now. Well, I, I, I will be poorer now. Yes. It won't make any difference to me because I've always got by. I was poorer in the 80s as well, and I got by. And but, but, but you didn't vote for that in the 80s. No, you you, you voted for it now. Please, James. Well, no, I mean, I'm responding Sorry. to what you're saying. That's how conversations work. You voted to be poorer, and you're proud of that. I didn't vote for that. 
And I didn't vote against immigration, but someone's got to pay my blooming pension when I get there, and we don't produce enough of our own to do well, Good luck with that. However, however, however. However. Two, two things. Reasons. Number one, the, number one, the European Union is not a complete union. You know that, and I know that. It has one, it, ha it has a northern powerhouse, if you like, so qu to, to, to quote that man, um, in, in the, the, the workaholic north. It has the people in the south of Europe who, God bless them, and I don't blame them, sit with a glass of wine under an olive tree most of the day. And it has eastern Europe, which has been in a deep freeze for 50 years and is slowly just emerging from that. Not their fault. Nobody's fault. But in order to get that into one union, you know that closer union is going to be a compulsory. No, I don't know that. To, it, it, it's going to no, but you're to doing that thing that you're not supposed to do right? anymore. You're making a prediction, telling me what I believe, and I'm telling you I don't believe that, and then you're complaining when I interrupt you. That, I mean, that's the debate in a nutshell. James, let me tell you what I believe. David, I don't believe that at all. Don't you dare interrupt me. Let me finish with my reasons. Now, uh, all right, hang on a second. But that is what you just did, mate, in a way that it's kind okay, of the end of the conversation. Okay. James, let me tell you what you believe, James. David, I don't believe that. How dare you interrupt me? Do you see how mad that is? No, 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 it's not mad, James. All right, I, I, it's I, not I, mad, you're right. You my, carry there's on. There's a second leg to my argument. There's yeah. a second leg to the argument, which I haven't come to yet. Well, you're already hopping. It does impinge, it does impinge on the first. I, I, str I think that most, uh, well, e economists, I know that, you know, you can fight, every time you get two economists, you, get, you, you know, you, 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 they even each other out. And that's but, not true. Over 90% ninety, over 90 were against leaving the European Union. No, but, over, uh, but there's a fair proportion of economists who do believe that for the European but about Union... about 10%. Well, union well, even, not even that, actually. You, you, you'll struggle to find anyone. I'll, g I'll give you Mervyn King. Who else have you got? No, it's going to have to have closer union. No, just give me a name. Apart from Mervyn King, give me one. I'm not an expert on economics. I know if you lay them all into oh, end, let's not let's not fall out. So let's just let's let's just, let, 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 just no no mate because I'm out of time and I don't want to fall out with you. I love you, David. I love you like a brother. But let's just recap on the two points you've just made. The first was James. You believe that there's going to be ever closer uh, union in the in Europe, and that is why we had to leave. David, I don't believe that. Lots of people don't believe that. It's enshrined in the constitution that that isn't going to happen. Okay. And then the second bit was lots of economists thought it was a good idea. David, can you name any? No, I can't, James. I'm not an expert. But you're not supposed to like experts anymore because this country has had enough of experts, which is one of the ideas that drove the Brexit vote. And I mean it. I don't want to fall out with you. But for heaven's sake, you make my job so easy. And I'm going to read you a, a, a text from George because it gives me real... What's the phrase I'm looking for? It gives me real conniptions, this, George. I, I think you're right. I don't really want to talk about this. He says, oh, James, stop, please. You're scaring the daylights out of us just so that you can say, I told you so. I'm not. I, I, I really hate these conversations. Largely because, George, most people won't recognise what you recognise, which is that it is just true. We are going to be worse off. You are going to be worse off. And if you're one of the 52%, you voted for it. That's just fact. I think even Farage admitted that, didn't he, in the run-up? He said, I don't care if, if there's a diminishment in, in GDP as long as there's fewer immigrants. I think he said that. I could be doing him a disservice. Um, and that's the thing, George, I don't want to do it. It's not fun for me. To, to, to point out this, it's, it really isn't. It's quite like winning arguments and stuff, but as an earlier caller pointed out, I do that for a living, he doesn't. It's not fun, but what happens if you don't keep telling the truth? What happens when you stop telling the truth because so many people are screaming at you with their fingers in their ears? Well, we do it again, and then we do it again, and then we do it again. This is effectively the devaluing of the pound that's underway at the moment, and the madness has become so acute that some people are claiming that's a good thing. It's a good thing. It might be, on a graph somewhere, a good thing that the pound is plummeting against the dollar. But if you're going shopping today, or tomorrow, or next year, or the year after, for something like, oh, petrol, or food, you're going to pay more. And they didn't really tell you that. And when the other lot tried to tell you that that was going to happen, well, your lot said Project Fear. And now that it's turning into Project Fact, that's talking the country down. So many areas that would be funny if we weren't living it, if we could just sit on the outside and look in and laugh. How about this idea that people who... who, who and, and remember when people text and tweet into the program, I can see their history. People who happily employ phrases like this country has been turned into a cesspit by, by decades of uncontrolled mass immigration. I don't recognise my country anymore. It's a disgusting hole. People like you, O'Brien, have turned this country into an armpit. And then... A month later, you get, why can't you be more optimistic? Why are you talking the country down? 
talking the country down. I'm describing currency fluctuations. This place is a cesspit. That is talking the country down. I love this country and I love the people in it, which is why I hate to see them lied to and I hate to see them suffer. And I hate to see the people who've caused that suffering and told those lies waltzing off into the sunset. They won't notice a 5p increase in the cost of petrol. People writing newspaper columns, presenting programmes about it, they won't even notice. Any more than they give a hoot about the 16 million people in this country with less than £100 in the bank. They spend that on a bottle of wine at lunch today. They just don't care. They sell papers, they bake clicks on the internet, and they occasionally get hired to provide some punditry on the telly by telling lies. Like, you'll be better off outside the biggest trading block in the world. You just won't. And I want to stop. I don't... It's boring. But I don't know what you do. It's sounding ever so slightly pompous, just for a moment. It, journalism, for me, was always about telling people the stuff they were too busy to find out for themselves. In the course of my career, and I think it's probably always been like this, I've just become less naive. But it's not about that, is it? Journalism is about telling people what they want to hear in the hope of making some money out of them. Proper journalism should be messages that chill you to the core. Proper journalism is, well, suggesting that at the moment in Syria we could be seeing the seeds being sown for something not a million miles away from World War Three. Putin's behaviour now, the bombing of hospitals, it's, it's just given. But you open up British newspapers, you see nothing. You go to British social media, you find pro-Putin propagandists gaining currency. <sighs> And then you look at what we've actually voted to do. I, I would love to be wrong. Absolutely love to. But when? Will that be proven? It's all very well for people who don't have less than £100 in the bank to say, oh, it'll take 10 years, it'll take 15 years, it'll be further down the line. People are struggling now. People are spending a third of their income on childcare and their pound is about to go less far. And the people that warned against this are being silenced and censored and told to shut up. It's like a banana republic. It's like some sort of totalitarian state where anybody standing up and telling the truth is told to sit down and shut up because he's scaring the horses. Max is in Reading. Max, what are you what are you here for? Hi, James. Um, just a quick one on what you just said about journalism. Um, I have picked up recently that um, LBC don't often report anything negative about Hillary Clinton. And I just, you know, I don't want either of them as president because either one of them is shot to the head or getting hung. But no, let, let, let's just let's run through that. Balanced. One is a mafia-supported serial liar with sociopathic tendencies and a long history of sexual abuse, and one of them was married to a bit of a lech. Uh, classified emails being leaked and whatnot, but but my point is, it's just, it what's in the classified report. emails, Max? No one knows. That's the whole I thought you just said they'd been leaked. No, and um, the, the the story of her. Uh, no, you said classified story. emails being leaked and whatnot. So I want to know what was in them. Oh no, no, I know what I said. I, I miss. I said the wrong thing. What I meant was the story was leaked. The fact that she destroyed her servers and and what have you. No, they, they also leaked lots of emails. <laughs> This yeah. is the smoking gun that you're comparing to Donald Trump's lifelong idiocy. So tell me what's in the smoking gun, mate. Well, I was just saying that if, the, if journalism is going to be unbiased and what have you, then you should look at both sides of the Unbelievable. coin. Unbelievable. I just did. I just described to you a woman who was once married to a bit of a lech versus a man who's made comments about the sexual attractiveness of his own 17-year-old daughter. A 17-year-old daughter who, by the way, made him promise that he'd never date anyone younger than her. Um, but you, you carry on telling me what objectivity is, Max. Let's just remind you why you rang in. We're talking about Brexit. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'll do it another day when you bring up that topic. Um, in terms of Brexit, I think... Uh, on the economic side of things, uh, it, it is gonna, it is bad. Um, I'm disappointed that it's bad because obviously I was told that it wasn't going to be as bad as it is. Well, what was Project um, Fear then? Well, th th this is what I'm trying to say. I, I, I was one of those people that did believe in quite a few economics, and some of the times I didn't. I, I never, I never believed that it would be as good as 350 million pound a week to the NHS. I wasn't that silly, but I didn't think that the pound would drop as much as it has now. However, but people told you it would. Yeah, people told me it would, and then people told, said that it wouldn't, and then there were, there were lies on both sides of the campaign. No, there weren't. There were predictions that haven't come true on one side, and there were bare-faced lies on the other, like the army, like Turkey, and like the 350 million quid for the NHS. But maybe we well, need to wait for the leaked that. emails. Uh, we'll wait for the leaked emails to come out before you start making sense. Martin's in Birmingham. Martin, what would you like to say? Hey, how you doing? I'm all right, mate. 
it did. Um, I'm yeah, standing, on, I'm standing on the edge of the road, watching a car crash in slow motion, shouting at one of the drivers, <laughs> brake, brake, steer, steer, and the driver's leaning out of his window telling me to shut up. You carry on. Uh, I feel like one one of the cars that are about to crash as well. Um, so I, I work for um, a, a electricals uh, manufacturer and we, we sell a lot of products to department stores. Um, obviously, we, we buy a lot of our products in, in dollar. Yes. Um, and obviously, we're with the cost price and obviously with, with what ha what's happening with the dollar at the moment. Um, we've held our prices pretty much until January, but we're, we're looking at a 10% price increase at the moment, which I know it's not too sexy as products go with kettles and toasters and that sort of thing, but um, obviously it adds up. The other problem, though, is that um, that was based on about a month ago. Um, obviously, the, the pounds dropped since then even more. Yes. So we're actually going to have to revise them revision um, probably even more so, probably look at another 5% on top of that to, to, to go on top with how it stands at the moment. So, do you export much? No, no, it's all coming into the country. It's all, it's all going into to, to British department stores and, and the like. And, and so, as a, as a manufacturer of kitchenware, and don't talk yourself down, mate. I think I think I reckon we can make kitchenware sound sexy without too much effort. But as a manufacturer of kitchenware, your prices are going up by about 10% wholesale. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm just trying to think what the silver lining is. What do I come back now and say to you if I was on... Well, that's good, mate, because the pound's overvalued. <laughs> I don't think that helps people's wallets, say. Um, hang on, let me try again. We've got our country back. Yeah, that doesn't really help much either. Oh, sorry. Um, hang on, let me check the papers. <laughs> It will act as a boost for the economy, says a former governor of the Bank of England, because... Because... Because! Yeah, because, Martin, because. Feeling, be feeling better yet? No. <laughs> um... But if you don't laugh, you cry, so... We might control... We might, we're might. we going to control our borders, mate, so there won't be any nasty foreign toasters coming in from Calais. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't like them once much anyway. And this is what happens when two sensible people with their eyes open talk about where their country is at the moment. Bleak, isn't it? Yeah. Not great. No any jokes? Um No. What do you call Not a the fish? Moment, anyway. What, what what do you call a fish with no eyes? Uh, um, a blind fish? Fish. <laughs> Martin, have a great day. Kevin is in Finchley. Kevin, I'm calming down a bit now. I've finally <laughs> spoken to a sensible person. What would you like to say? <laughs> Good morning, James. Right. Um, look, if, if you don't laugh, you will cry. Now, mm. you know, I, I, the, way, the way I look at this, and you may or may not um, agree with me, but I think you know, the only way to kind of understand the mindset of someone who is a Brexiteer who looks at the current state of the economy and the fact that the sterling is, you know, is in a, is in a horrific place versus the dollar and says, well, you know, this, this is all good. Now, the reason why they would say that there's no problem here is because they're basically cutting their nose to spite their face. Now, what I mean by this is that, you know, I believe that there is a, not just, you know, a European, but an, a, 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 but, but you say, I'll, I'll say Western repositioning of the world and, and world powers. And what I mean by that is that there's always, you know, look, I want to go back to a Britain that was primarily white, um, you know, primarily English. We didn't have so many immigrants. We didn't have so many... Are you, you know, are you describing people. yourself now, or, or are you positing the no, position no, of others? No, no, no. Well, how can I? No, I'm, I'm, I'm black. From I don't know. Okay, I, I just, I just got. I would be. Okay, <laughs> but I, I, it's not fair to say. I mean, look, there is clearly a xenophobic flavour. You only have to look at the people who are, who are shouting at me now and click on their little profiles, and it's all about the Islamization of Britain. They're the ones talking the country down. But there's there's people who thought they were voting. There's young, intelligent, educated people who voted to leave, and they're not xenophobes. I sit, I was sitting next to one earlier today. That, that what 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 has to happen for them to wake up and go? Oh, I've made a terrible mistake. Well, number one, it's too late because if you've made m the mistake, you you almost want to try and justify it. So, but, you know, yes, you know, th there is going to be a proportion of the Brexiteers voters who are young, intelligent, who thought, you know, what I want to get, you know, um, a country that. 
where where we control our 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 destiny. I get that, but I'm sorry, I'm going to refer back to the fact that I think, unfortunately, in a significant proportion of the people who voted for Brexit, you know, are the same people who are looking at um, across the pond, looking at um, at at Trump and say, you know what, if I was American, I would vote for Trump. They are the same people because they almost want to basically go back to a yesteryear where, and I, 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 look, I'm a black man, okay, whereas you know, the whites had the power, there was no political correctness, and they could say what they wanted to say. A lot of these guys want to go back to you know, the 1940s, 1950s, where they felt as though, guess what, they did have you know, a, a, a white privilege, as, as you call it. So the fact is that this short-term pain of paying a bit more for my fuel but you know my my bread's going to go up you know, they're not they're not going to get the, the, there's no term. pot of gold at the end of the rainbow either so even if they can say well i don't mind sucking up the fact that petrol's going up and food's going up and toasters and kettles down in birmingham are going up everything's going up it's all going to cost more but that's okay because there's going to be fewer brown or black faces around at some distant point in the future that's not going to happen either do you know why kevin <laughs> Yes. Because people like you are going to insist on having bloody children. Well, you know, I think the other day someone actually spoke to your colleague and friend at um, 10, 10, 10 a.m. in the morning um, Sunday on LBC. I, I, don't, I, I listen, uh, we're talking about journalism, mate, not pantomimes, okay? And the word that he used was, well, look, you know, we can't have refugees coming over, you know, these, these, these child refugees, because, because they'll come over and they'll start breeding. I, 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 no, I can't do this. I can't, I don't, I, obviously, I, 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 I can't believe anybody who's paid by my employers would come out with language like that or lines like that. I, I, you must have misheard. You must have been listening to a different station. Kevin, have a great day. The phones are bonkers, but remember, as soon as I bid farewell to one caller, it frees up a phone line for you. So uh, judicious use of redial is the trick. I think we'll carry on with this. Um, it is, it seems to me, very, very hard at the moment to find anywhere in the British media, because everybody in the media came out for leave. 82% of newspaper coverage, Rupert Murdoch, Paul Dacre, Daily Mail, Sun, Telegraph, you name it. So you're not getting news now. All you're getting is, is back covering. Front of the mail, an absolute masterclass in this process today, uh, saying JCB boss is leaving CBI because CBI made predictions about Brexit that were negative and is still saying it's been a terrible mistake as if that's somehow good news and to prove that it's good news they found a bloke a retired financial advisor called Hargreaves or something and so it's quite incredible but of course if that's the only news you're getting by the time you get to page nine and you see a little paragraph about the fact that the price of petrol and diesel is going up by five pence a litre probably this month you're not putting the two together and that's why I think it's important to continue these conversations, even though sometimes uh, yeah, the dent that you leave in the brick wall with your own forehead is, is huge. Um, anyway, more in a moment. First, whether you're a landlord, a tenant or a homeowner, Clive Bull and his expert guests answer your questions every Thursday night from 9 on LBC's Property Hour. And right now you could win an Apple iPhone 6S, an Apple Watch Sport and a Monster Portable Battery Pack thanks to Direct Line Landlord Insurance. Find out more about their de facto five-star rated insurance by searching online for Direct Line Landlord. For your chance to win and to download the Property Hour podcast, go to lbc.co.uk. Need some new words as well? Well, because stupid's not fair. It certainly doesn't describe the people who voted to leave that I know. Stupid is a million miles from the truth. Um, what would be the new word then? Because it's about admitting now. If, if you're going to be worse off personally, are you still happy with your vote? Because that is weird to me. Why would you be happy? Well, there's going to be fewer immigrants. But you're going to be worse off. Yeah, but, okay, I, I guess at least there's a consistency to that. But now we're moving into the bit where all the people that told you you were going to be worse off are being told to shut up when they point out that they um, were right. And I've just been told that the fellow that they're quoting on the front page of the mail as, as, as evidence of why it's such a great idea for the head of JCB to leave the CBI uh, donated a seven-figure sum to the Leave campaign. <laughs> Journalism. Where do you go for the news? If every single news outlet was pro-Leave, pretty much... Guardian stayed fairly on the fence. Uh, the Times came out as pro-Remain, didn't it? But only after the Sun had come out as pro-Leave, which kind of undoes the numbers democratically. Where do you go for news now? Where do you go for an actual, objective analysis of what is going to happen to the pound in your pocket? Where do you go? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. 
I'll tell you where you go. You stay with me. 10.55. And, and you're not going to like it. It's bitter medicine, this, for a lot of people. But it's the truth. Your food's going up. Everything's going up. Maybe it'll come down again. But who are you going to trust to tell you when? Given that the people you need to tell you when are the same people that told you this wouldn't happen. Mark's in Epping. Mark, what would you like to say? Yeah, morning, James. How are you doing? I'm well. <laughs> I'm confused as well, right? I, I voted out. Okay, now, I don't know. Was it the, the you said it was the ex governor? I said that uh, for the last three years, they've been trying to increase interest rates, reduce house prices, and increase inflation. Well, he, he's trying to say, I know better than the current governor. Well, but he was he was saying that that's what they was actually trying to do. So were they trying to sabotage our economy anyway, or is there a reason for it? First off, I've got three questions for you. I'm not here to make. I, can't, a I don't understand the first one, and that's my fault, not yours. Okay, okay. So you said that they have been they had been trying before Brexit to increase interest rates, increase inflation. Right, but they, who's they? Because the the, the impact, the, 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 no, the, the the impact votes on that every quarter or every month. They vote on whether or not to increase interest rates. If they wanted to, they could. They voted not to. I know that I'm citing experts, but I think you might have misunderstood. Mervyn King is probably arguing that they should have done, but they didn't. The, yeah, the, well, he, what he was saying was they wanted to, but they didn't think it was good for the economy. So I understand that. Well, that doesn't make sense either, them. does it? Why, why would the Monetary Advisory Committee at the Bank of England want to do something that they knew would be bad for the economy? Well, because they wanted to increase interest rates so people would start saving and actually earn some money on their savings. They wanted to reduce house prices because people were totally priced out of the market. Um, well, this no, no. This is this is. I, I, you put me in quite a difficult position because I think you're a bit confused. Uh, the 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 point. Yeah. I am. That's, that's, yeah. I am. Totally well, confused. well, well. Think of it this way, right? If if someone got your old job and they were doing quite well and they were doing a lot of things you disagreed with, would you be praising them or saying that they're making terrible mistakes? Oh, well, you've just took me on to my second point. Right, someone good. has just took my job. Yes. Someone has reduced my earnings and it's totally making me sick. Um. Look at, look at this. Okay, so taxes. One of the reasons I voted as well was that in the hope that we'd get out of these European tax laws and people that were based in this country, earning in this country, would pay tax in this country. Like what? Like, Uber, like, do you mean Uber, like corporations? Yeah, like Uber. They, they, they announced yesterday massive, massive profit. 400 grand and, tax. Exactly. And, and, that's, and that's all they're paying in this country. And they oh. made multi-millions. Hang on, I'm, let, let me finish. Yeah, I will. So, Addison Lee... Lost, they, was it last year they earned 33 million? I haven't got the numbers in front of me, but I accept the, well, would, the central thrust of what you're saying is you were hoping that the British government would bring in laws to make businesses pay more tax here than they do under EU regulations. Absolutely, which was one of the reasons Mate, I you, voted oh, out. Oh, and sweetheart, I need to give you a cuddle. Come here a minute. I, I do, I need a massive one. Come here, Mark, because the, yeah. on, the oh. only way you're going to get a lot of these businesses to stay in Britain after they take the punch in the face that Brexit will deliver will be making their tax situation even more comfortable than it is now, Mark. Yeah, but the, this is what I'm trying to... This is, what I'm, this is why I'm so confused, because you've got people like Addison Lee that took a two-thirds hit on their profits. They went from 33 million to 11 million, and they're paying tax in this country. Yes. So why is our government allowing companies like that to do that? Trickle-down um, economics, Mark. You attract the businesses here and all their employees pay income tax and it's good for everybody. And if you want to see that supported by somebody in the media, you turn to the Daily Mail or the Sun. But they're not, they're not paying tax in this country. And, and with fuel... With the fuel they're going to pay less just... when we leave the EU because we have to make it a place that is more attractive than our new rivals in Berlin and Paris and Bonn. I, no, I, I, I don't get it. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, is someone is lying through their teeth. Yeah, and I don't. And I, you the keep people, putting it down the people you voted for. Yeah, but you keep putting it. All I hear from you is immigration. Not today, immigration. mate. Not today. Well, yeah, I have. That's Toasters, kettles, the pound, the price of petrol, the price of shopping, tax on Uber's profits. That's not true. But if you if you look at the debate, then immigration was a massive part of it. I think it came top, didn't it, in the polling. Well, everything you've quoted is every, all the reason your call is going to be But your reason, I can hear the music, so you're going to cut me off. But your reason is immigration, and most of us wasn't. Mine, mine truly wasn't immigration. No, but you're the people I feel sorry for. You're the people who should be cross with all the ones who were banging on about immigration, and I think you will be soon.
Man, the appetite for a conversation that you won't find anywhere else in the British media remains strong. How many people realised they were going to be financially worse off for the foreseeable, if not permanent, future when they voted to leave the European Union? And how many of those poor, misled people are comforted, comforted by the thought that if they had lots of shares in FTSE 100 companies or lots of investments in pensions and savings, they might be doing all right, thank you very much, at the moment. Of course, the fact that 16 million people in this country have less than £100 salted away for a rainy day suggests that even if you are comfortable with the fact that you're going to be worse off personally, you don't give a monkeys about all the people who are going to suffer. Well, I do, and I refuse to apologise for that, and I refuse to stop pointing out that you, even if you voted the opposite way to what would have protected you a little bit financially, you still deserve the protection of proper journalists. You still deserve the protection of the British media. You still deserve to be spoken up for. Even if you've got your fingers in your ears and your eyes closed and you're still pretending everything's going to be all right, somebody has to speak up for you. Because you're going to have to pay five pence a litre more for your petrol by the end of this month. You're going to have to do your Christmas shopping with the pound in your pocket worth notably, notably less than it is today. You're going to have to do all these things. You're going to have to suck up all this stuff. And then when you turn to other news outlets, most obviously today the Daily Mail, you read stuff like this. Uh, JCB has taken the right decision. The CBI is one of the most irrelevant organisations ever formed, said Peter Hargreaves, founder of financial services firm Hargreaves Lansdowne last night. What the Daily Mail doesn't tell you, but which I think you deserve to know, is that this man gave £3.2 million to the Leave campaign. £3.2 million. We need to find someone who thinks that JCB have done the right thing by leaving the CBI. Oh, uh, OK, let's find this bloke. Let's stick him in the story and not mention that he gave £3.2 million to the Leave campaign, so he's got so much invested in it himself, despite the fact that his company lost 400 million quid in the two days after the vote. He'll be all right. It's you that won't. I'll be all right. But if you're one of the 16 million people with less than 100 quid in the bank, you, you're going to be worse off. And man alive, the fact that the people who have done it to you are telling people like me to be quiet, surely that makes you wake up and smell the coffee, even if it does have to be instant these days. 03456060973 is the number that you need. Ashley's in Pinner. A happy Brexiteer, Ashley. Why? Um, yes, happy Brexiteer, definitely. Um, it's good to be on. Um, I just wanted to give my personal, personal opinion and, and circumstances. Um, I recently went self-employed a couple of years ago. Um, so it was a big thing voting Brexit because I was building my business with client base, etc. Um, but I think it's all going to be short term. Um, what, what, what business are you in, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I'm a, I'm a self-employed electrician, um, although we've just, we've, we're, we're getting bigger and bigger um, but as the weeks go by, but, you know, I, I just... What, what's going to be short-term, Ash, Lee? Uh, per personal loss. Personal financial loss. Oh. Um, they they did, know, to, to be fair, before the vote, they did tell you there wouldn't be any. Well, I think, the, well, I, I, was, I was never naive to the fact that there, there would be, I mean, I believe there would be, um, and I was willing to take that sacrifice just for the, for the independence and the, um, just, that, you know, so we control our own laws. I mean, you know, you, you know what I do there. now, don't you? What's that? I, I ask you which law it is you're really looking forward to not having to obey anymore. Um, any. It, it, oh, no, not, that's, that's right, any. Yeah, any. Yeah, any, any. It's, yeah, it's, so give me one. The, the, um, the shape of your bananas. <laughs> it's not funny, is it? Uh, it well, it, it, it's, it's not. Because the, pound, um, the pound's uh, at the lowest it's been since 1985, and, and, and you just said oh, any law, and I'm just asking you to name one. We, we both know that bananas was a lie made up by Boris Johnson. Remind me which side he was on during the Leave campaign? <laughs> well, he was up for himself, but that's, that's not... So what, what, what is the law, Ashley? Because you didn't vote. You knew you were going to take short-term economic damage. You knew that all your customers would do as a, as a newly formed electrician company. Every single customer in yeah. the country potentially is going to be worse off than they were before the vote. So I'm just wondering what yeah. those laws are that you won't have to obey anymore that made you vote for this short-term economic hit. Well, it wasn't the laws which was the main, which was the main reason. What's the, just the main reason you gave me, wasn't it, a minute ago? Yeah, sorry. It's there's there's so many. There's many can reasons. you name one yet? Um, I wouldn't be able to. No. We're so no, you, so you voted so that law. you wouldn't have to obey these EU laws that you can't name. No, no. It's 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 more than that. It's well, go it, on then. I mean, well, you you watch a Brussels. You what you go to um, Brussels. You you watch the guys talking. It's it's all very. 
it's very political and it's i mean they're they're throwing their toys out the pram because we you know the british people chose to leave um and you know it's it's like baking a cake taking it into work and someone says they don't, they don't want a slice and you get all uppity about it i mean it's it's we're trying to be we're trying to examine why you voted the way you voted because you now accept that it's going to cost you money you you hope yeah. in the short term I, I i hate to break it to you but we're not even going to be close to signing deals for years so that uncertainty no. that's affecting your balance book your your order book is going to continue indefinitely and then i ask you why you did it then why you accepted that hit to your own pocket and you say well because of all those laws that you can't name and then when i ask you what the real reason is you say because the eu is really political no. Well, I mean, I mean, well, what, 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 at what point in this mirror that I'm holding up and that you're looking at? At yeah. what point are you going to recognise what you're seeing in the reflection? You're seeing a man who hasn't got an argument. Well, I, I believe the, the argument is, is there's, there's multiple arguments. There's Go on, then. Immigration, they've oh. got controlled immigration. But again, it's not about it's not about you know. I'm not xenophobic. I you know I'm not totally multicultural. I've got a family in America, in in Bermuda, in in Spain, and yeah, all immigrants. We, yeah, well, immigrants are fine. You know, it's, it, there's nothing wrong. You know, they're the same as me and you, looking for a, the best future for their family. But it's not about that. It's it's about the control. It's about our our prime minister. Having not having to succumb to the EU saying that he can or she can't do anything. I mean, it's the fact that we, you know, and no, that's <laughs> fine. I, I, I've got no beef with you. you. Know? If, if, yeah. it's, if immigration's all you've got, then you're, you're, you're the cliche. You're the walking cliche. But well, what's interesting, actually, and I hope you won't take this the yeah. wrong way, what's interesting is that you spend five minutes pretending that you've got proper political arguments or economic understanding, and then as all of those claims fall away, you're just left with foreigners. No, no, def definitely not. Definitely how has not. immigration damaged your life, would you say, in its current um, form? Well, well, obviously, being a, being a trade, immigration has, has pulled prices. No, not, in, not, 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 in the, not, not for electricians. There's, there's scant evidence that it, for completely unskilled labour, it might have sub subjected yeah. some wage compression in the care home industry and maybe unskilled labour on working sites. But there's actually a shortage mm. of qualified electricians in this country, which is probably why yeah. you've gone self-employed. So it's not that, is it? Yeah, it's... Well, plasterers, plumbers, electricians... Yeah, but you're an electrician. I'm asking... All, all skilled yeah. labour is actually at a shortage at the moment. That's one of the reasons we can't build as many houses as we need to. So just in terms of Ashley and Pinner and the damage that, that uncontrolled mass immigration has done to your life, just give me the headlines. Um, walking, walking through the, the city centre and seeing, and seeing mobs of, um, of immigrants not willing to integrate... Not Walking to through the centre of Pinner and seeing mobs of yeah. immigrants not willing to immigrate, not willing to P integrate. P Plymouth, Plymouth, down by Cornwall, Plymouth. Okay. Not P not Pinner, but yeah, I mean. And I, how I how like, how do you think leaving the European Union is going to disperse those mobs, Ashley? I think we can. We'll have more control over how. No, but they're already integrate. here, mate. Yeah, but we'll have, we'll have more control to... to no, they're here. These, so those mobs that, that, that upset you so much as you walk through town and see these mobs of immigrants refusing to integrate, now that we're going to leave the European Union, what's going to happen to the mobs? Um, I believe that we can, we can integrate them because we can... We, we, you know, we, we have the choice and we have the, the, um, the authority to do what we like without... So when we've pa passed... Right well, so you've that. cast your vote because you don't want these people here in the numbers that they're here in, but you think that by doing that you're going to make them more amenable to integration and friendliness. So you deliver a message to someone saying, we don't like you, and you think that makes them more likely to be your friend. Not like, it's not about liking anyone. We, well, you don't like the mobs about... in the middle of town, do you? No, and that goes that goes with mobs of of Englishmen as well. You know, oh. it doesn't matter on, on race. It doesn't okay, so it's got nothing to do with immigration then. It's it, just mobs it you don't like. A, <laughs> yeah, just don't like mobs and no, bananas. Think, yeah, yeah, and, and all those and, laws uh, that you straight, can't name. Bananas. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 Let's just I, finish I, with a quick question. When you said it's going to be a short term economic hit, how, how long is short term? I think it's going to be under five years. It's so just like starting a new business. Every single one of your customers is going to be worse off than they needed to be for half a decade, and you're happy with that? I'm happy, yeah. I'm happy with that. All right, mate. Let's not fall out. And I hope the business goes. I really do. I hope it booms, even though you voted to have fewer customers and less money in the pockets of the ones you've already got. Adam's in Brent. Adam, what have you got? Hi, good morning. Um, the previous customers, they touch people like that, they make my blood boil because they're... It's not they're his fault, no mate. No, you don't they get cross with no the people answer. that buy it, you get cross with the people that sell it, Adam. 
they have no answers. It's, it's really a shame what our country has come to. I'm not. I wasn't. I was very for voting to stay in the in the EU, not because I knew politics, I knew economics, but I knew what we're into. I knew that if we're going to leave, immigration won't change. The pound will probably be wor- um, worse off, like you see it is. And I can see, especially in my company where we work, and we we import cheeses from the European Union, and we produce milk in in the UK. Since the since we've left, the price of the euro has gone up, the pound has dropped. All European countries are importing milk from the from the UK to Europe. We are importing cheese from the EU to Europe. We are paying more, they're paying less, and we're paying more for milk because there's a demand for to being exported. So it's costing us much more. Everything's gone up by 10, 15 percent. We can't charge our customers more because they don't want to pay it. And my boss is losing out every month. So either either the cost gets passed on to the customer or, or the company goes under ultimately. Yeah, but we're going to the to the customer. But can you see how Ashley? Do you reckon you can see how Ashley's five years? Because uh, five years, everything's going to be all right, and that's not fair. I'm being I'm being unkind to Nothing. Ashley. I mean, you, even my friends my friends tell me, yeah, the pound is only weak at the moment. I don't see the pound getting any stronger sooner. I mean, it's a shame. No, but that's good for exports. Oh, hang on, you do you do export stuff. But we don't export. Oh, you import cheese. We import from the EU, but European countries are now exporting from the UK. Oh, and of course, the other thing, the other thing about export is that it usually involves raw materials that have been imported. So, Adams, yeah. I mean, you're importing stuff and paying a cost. If you're exporting stuff, you've got to import all the stuff you make your toasters out of in the first place. Things like metal. Oh man, alive! And and it was the conversation with Ashley. I loved Ashley. I got to be honest, because he's honest. And he's not sticking his fingers in his ears, really. He's, he's just hoping, he's crossing his fingers, even though most of the evidence is now against him. And, and that's fine, because so much effort was put into persuading him, and indeed the rest of the nation, that they should do this thing, that you can't hold him responsible for the fact that he hasn't got a leg to stand on when it comes to his arguments. I would rather deal with someone like him than someone who, and there's plenty of these around now, who will be saying, well, I don't care, I don't care, yeah, me, Ramonas, Romaniacs, me. If someone has to invent a word to describe the people pointing out how wrong they are, you kind of do the work of your critics for them. Have to think up an actual word. Oh, Romaniac. Have you got any constructive arguments? No, you're a Romaniac. Have you got any evidence to support the idea that you haven't just done something epically stupid, or at least potentially stupid? Oh, Ramona, Ramona, get over it, stop talking. Guys, you're grown-ups, you're actual adults. Yesterday we had adults queuing up to tell us why it is acceptable for an elderly man to boast about grabbing young women by the genitals. And today we've got people queuing up to tell us why it's absolutely fine that poor people are about to get considerably poorer because, oh, bananas and, and mobs. 11.16. Where do you go for proper journalism now that so much of the British media invested so much energy and expense in telling you to vote to leave the EU? I'll tell you where you end up. You end up with a front page story in the Mail quoting a bloke who gave £3.2 million to the Leave campaign as the expert who can comment on the wisdom of the JCB boss who also gave a fortune to the Leave campaign deciding to pull out of the CBI that represents all of British business. British business that said it would be bad, but that was all Project Fear. And now that it's becoming Project Fact, whose fault is it? All the people who said it would happen. They're all to blame. It's its mad. Absolutely mad. And I think part of the reason I get so exercised about it is that you feel it shifting. You feel it moving. This notion of, of where the middle is, where the balance lies. You conducted a campaign which saw about 90% of informed opinion lined up on one side and given exactly the same amount of coverage and time to the 10% lined up on the other side, which creates a false idea. It all began with climate change. It creates a false idea that there's a balanced argument here. It would be a bit like, you know, uh, having a bloke who, who still thinks the earth is flat in the studio getting exactly the same amount of time as a bloke who has been to space and seen that it's round. If that is what it's like. That's where we are now. And the media have done it. The newspapers have done it to us because, well, it sells. Scaring you sells. Making you angry sells. Telling you to calm down doesn't. It's part of the reason why I have to start a show on a day like today, by making you angry. It's no good me just coming on air being all calm and happy. I have to get you angry because that way you'll react. Even though it's not me you're angry with, it's actually yourself. I just hold up mirrors. What you're seeing is someone who has now voted to be worse off. 
And when I push you on why, where do you go? You go where Ashley goes. Start talking about mobs in town centres. It's, it, it's money in your pocket. And maybe there are more important things than that to you right now and your family. Maybe sovereignty is going to keep your children warm during winter or keep the fridge full at Christmas. Maybe it is. But I don't see how. If you can show me how, I'll bite your arm off. Show me how, in a country where 16 million people have got less than 100 quid, a decision, a democratic decision to make everybody worse off is something that you still welcome. And if you did vote for it and you are now feeling stupid, don't. Don't feel stupid. Just feel conned. Not stupid. Conned. Bus, 350 million quid on the side of it. That's persuasive, isn't it? Oh, we knew that was a lie all along. That was just a suggestion. No, I never said that, says a politician, photographed in front of it 30 times. Conned. And you know what the hardest thing to do is? You know what's even harder than fooling someone? Convincing them that they've been fooled. Which is why the media is walking away. It's why a lot of the politicians are walking away. It's why so much effort is going into silencing them. Shut up with your talking the country down, you remoniac. Why? Why is that happening? Because there's only one thing harder than fooling people, and that's convincing them they've been fooled. But you have. David's in Stratford. David, what would you like to say? How are you doing, James? Um, I'm good, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'll be all right. I can afford petrol even if it goes up by, you know, 50p a litre. <laughs> I, I work in a building, so I, I don't really understand politics. The people mm. I work with don't really understand Not politics. as a cabinet, mate. Right. So what I'm saying to you is, why are people like that having a say on whether we stay stay in or, or we leave Europe? Why? I, I'm, 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 in, I'm in a canteen listening to people saying, get out of Europe, we, we want all the foreigners to leave. That's yeah. not going to happen. No. It's not going to happen. Well, I mean, the, the referendum was called no. to unite the Conservative Party and it Hello? succeeded in divide. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. So you can't really argue that people shouldn't have... Well, actually, you can. You, what you're effectively saying is, why have we allowed a decision to be taken by, by a, a country where even yeah. some of the senior politicians didn't know their backside from their elbow? You know, people haven't got a clue. I'm, 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 on, I'm at work, and all I'm hearing is people saying, um, get, get all the foreigners to leave, get them out of here and all that. And as soon as we, we exit... These people I'm working with are waving goodbye to the foreigners, and I'm thinking, how can you have a say in where we stay in or out? I, I, I'll admit to you now, I, I don't really have a clue about politics. I try and keep up, but I don't really understand it. So I didn't vote. So why are people allowed to vote on, on such a massive decision? Because David Cameron was 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 he pushed it. He pushed his luck too far. He, he, you know, he didn't probably think he was even going to win the general election, let alone have to deliver on a referendum. And he just presumed... And, and listen, it's very hard to answer your question without patronising the half the country. <clears throat> but he presumed that people would not vote to punch themselves in the face. He didn't really understand how easy it would be to persuade people that they wouldn't be punching themselves, as your workmates prove, they'd only be punching foreigners. <laughs> I think that's part of it. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to people ring up and they're saying it's great and all that, and then you're asking them a few questions and they, they can't even answer your questions. No. <laughs> it, it baffles me. Well, that's why you probably should have voted. <laughs> but if I vote, what, what do I do? Because I don't fully understand it, which is well, what, it, what I'm it, trying it, to... If, if you take the people that run the banks, right, and, and very flawed individuals in many ways, central bankers, less so, but, you know, as opposed to private banks, so the bloke that runs the Bank of England, and you ask him his opinion, and he tells you, then you find someone else that you want to trust even more than the governor of the Bank of England, and they give you, pff, I don't know, um, that, that, that is me for me, where the debate fell down, is that nobody actually won the trust of the people because so much effort was put into calling experts liars or calling experts frauds or saying we don't need experts. Where does someone like you, David, go to for good advice? I can't think of anywhere except me. No. <laughs> <laughs> James, I, I started listening to LBC a few months ago just to, <laughs> you know, try and understand and, and I'm, I'm, I, can, I hear, these, hear these people ringing up and they haven't got a clue what they're talking about. It's all about the second so, question. David, if you're really interested in the people listening to the programme, if you're really interested in the plight of people who, who are suffering, listen for the second question. Always listen for the second question. The first question will be, what do you think? Right? The only way you really find out is with the second question, which is why 
do you think that? A lot of people never ask that question, which is how a lot of bogus and completely, completely bonkers opinions go unchallenged. What do you think? Well, I think this, that, or the other. Ask the second question, and you end up hearing about mobs and bent bananas. And that probably answers your question about how you should have voted. Yeah. But it, it, it baffled, Dave, listen, listen if, if I don't know something about something, I keep my mouth shut. So well, that'd be me out of it. Yeah. That'd be me out of a job, David. So I'm not going to follow that advice. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words. Mind how you go. Andy's in Bromley. Remember, as David goes away, it frees up a phone line for you if you're struggling to get through. I don't know how long we're going to continue with this, but seeing as it's not happening anywhere else in the British media, probably for a while. Andy is in Bromley. What would you like to say, Andy? Oh, James, oh, I want Andy. to know what happened to... I want to know what happened to consequence. Yeah. Why is there no consequence for Gove, Johnson and Farage? Yeah. Why is it they've just been able to just slip away in a little cloud of dust? They've come in, caused absolute well, Johnson chaos. hasn't been, actually. And this is going to be the next chapter, well, he isn't was it? A fool. He shot himself in the foot, didn't he? He then shot himself in the foot, so he deserved everything he got. Uh, but quite frankly, Boris you know, shuffles himself into a nice little job. Farage just keeps that ridiculous grin on his face that, that uh, still has not been removed mm. and how he has stood up in uh, the EU Parliament and said what he said afterwards on behalf of this nation I don't know. So none of you have ever I had a proper job while the bloke sitting behind him was a former brain surgeon. Exactly. You know they should all be done for treason. They should all be done for treason. Well, now, you're sounding, now, now you're sounding like them. I mean, words like treason and treachery but, but actively, actively encouraging people to Damage the country in a way is a form of treason, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's, exactly it's, what it it's is. not a word we it need here. It, it is exactly. They have hung us all, and we all carry on. I mean, what does also? I, I struggle to understand. So the prime minister now, and I hope she does listen to this program because then she will get a, a you know a real sense of the country. <laughs> um, of course, you could do a second vote. You could always do a second vote. There is no, if she made that call, she could make that call. And at first I thought she was a very she strong idea. Yeah, I not. did as well, but Why you see, she, she, same, reason, ca same reason Cameron called the referendum in the first place. She's terrified of the, of the lunatic fringe of her own party. One of them, I forget which one, one of the Davises, not David Davis, said yesterday in Parliament that Brexit was like, you couldn't have a hard or soft Brexit because it was like being pregnant. You either are or you aren't. So probably the single most complicated trade negotiation that this country has ever undertaken coupled with potentially the biggest foreign policy crisis since Suez, and she's got people sitting on her back benches who think it's binary. That's why she's doing what she's doing. She has to, because it's not a massive majority she's got in the House of Commons. She has to keep the, 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 the sl sort of more UKIP-y flavoured back benches quiet. And that's why Cameron called the referendum in the first place. It's only listening to you, talking to you, I've realised that. She's actually being held hostage by precisely the same lunatics that were holding Cameron hostage. But I don't, what I don't understand, James, is if she is the Prime Minister, she has taken responsibility for that party and the country. And actually, we no, as she a hasn't, people... She hasn't. Know, she's abnegated that responsibility. She's abnegated that responsibility the minute that she said Brexit means Brexit, having previously said this will damage our national security and it will be bad for our economy. So as Prime Minister, she is now either lying or deliberately acting against the interests of the country. And they're asking Parliament to do that as well. Massive majority of MPs didn't want to leave. They are elected to represent the interests of their constituents. Their constituents' interests, in their view, were best served by staying in the European Union. They're going to be asked to vote on leaving. They're going to be asked to stick their hand up in the air and say, leave, which is actually asking elected British parliamentarians to vote against what they believe to be the best interests of their constituents. And that is the polar opposite of democracy. The polar opposite of parliamentary democracy and the polar opposite of a sovereign parliament. The one thing that the so-called intellectual arguments were supposed to deliver. Sovereignty. Parliamentary democracy. It's been made a mockery of. I hadn't even thought of that angle. Thanks for the call. And it is fairly straightforward. We're going to be worse off as a nation and as individuals as a result of Brexit. Maybe not forever, but today and tomorrow and certainly next year and the year after and the year after that and then when we've signed all these deals the idea that we're going to be better off than we were as a member of the world's largest trading bloc is very optimistic it could still come true it could still come true but how many people actually actually listened when they were told they were going to be worse off and how many people bought into the idea 
that Project Fear was somehow... What, what do you think? I never quite got my head around what you thought, what people thought was motivating the, the, the so-called liars on the Remain side. The Leave side, really easy. One quote, Rupert Murdoch. When I go into Downing Street, they do what I tell them. When I go to Brussels, nobody listens. There you go. They're, they're, that's the logic. Massive majority of the media support for the Leave side, right there. Rupert Murdoch. When I go into Downing Street, nobody, I, they do what I tell them. When I go to Brussels, nobody listens. Verbatim quote. Interview, I think, with Anthony Hilton in the Evening Standard a few years ago. I could have got that wrong, but I didn't get the quote wrong. So that, that you can get your head around it if you're on the other side of the fence and you're thinking, well, where's the where's the engine coming? Where's their engine? Someone like Rupert Murdoch comes out with a line like that. You think, well, that's half half the media done. And then the Daily Mail on the other side, uh, same side of the argument, other side of the news agent. They effectively have an editorial policy that sort of thinks when uh, middle-aged to elderly white men were in charge and their women were just at home keeping the slippers warm, the world was a much better place and you didn't have to worry about all those sort of brown faces and, and, and gays and stuff like that. And so that's the other side of it, that sort of weird you kippy, we can turn the clock back, we can, we can opt out of the 21st century. So I get my head around that engine. And then you've got the, the, the more sympathetic people, the cleverer people, if you will, or the people who sort of think they were cleverer, talk about sovereignty and talk about uh, parliamentary democracy. And I, I kind of get that as well. But what, what did the people on that side think motivated the governor of the Bank of England? Or, or, or just about everybody, every other expert. Why, why would they want to lie? That's what I never quite understood. You get lines occasionally like, oh, you're all going to get a job. You're all going to get a job in the EU. You're probably going to get a job as a commissioner. Well, that would apply to like three people, wouldn't it? Why, 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 why would you want to lie? If you were just saying, this is a really big mistake, better the devil you know. Why, what, what was the motivation behind those lies? You can see the motivation behind what the other side did. But if you thought Remain was lying, why were they lying? Oh, to protect the status quo. Yeah, but if the, if the status quo is better than the alternative, why would you not want to protect it? What do we want? To be worse off. When do we want it? June the 24th. Well, well done. You've done it. Mission accomplished. What do we want? To be worse off. When do we want it? Now! Okay, cool. Congratulations. You've won. You're worse off. Every single one of us. For how long? I don't know. And then they'll print some stories showing that some billionaire has done all right, or share prices have done this, or this, that, and the other, and exports, and then, and then, and Don't care. Ignore them all. Just count the money in your pocket and see how far it gets you down the shops. Because that is really what economics is for the massive majority of us. And speaking of majorities, 16 million people in this country have less than 100 quid. They're now poorer than they were three months ago. Mario's in Bexley Heath. Mario, I need cheering up. What have you got? Well, I'd like to say that... Uh and I'm going to talk more about the economic part of uh, what's happening. I think Brexit is like a cover story for, for the U.K. going into administration because we're the second biggest debtor nation in the world after the United States. And one way to uh, make that debt more sustainable is to devalue the currency, and that's what, what's happening. We've spent... Uh, as a nation, you know, individuals, con you know, government and consumers, we've spent too much in the last 25 years. And uh, borrowing and spending is just like spending the future. So it's just payback time. I think Brexit has accelerated the process. But even if we hadn't had Brexit, we're still going to be worse off in the future. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. I, I, I've been fair enough. I suppose that's one line of defense. Yeah, things are going to be absolutely awful, but they could have been just as awful or possibly even worse if we hadn't done it. The problem is that all the people telling us to vote to leave were telling us things were going to get better. And it's them, I think, that I would possibly like to be left alone in a darkened room with for a couple of hours. John, is it? Although they probably send the PR in to drag them out again. John's in Bristol. John, what would you like to say? Hi, yeah, um, I just, well, I think you're kind of wrong, to be honest. <laughs> if you could just start off there. But, um, essentially... What, what about, I voted, John? I, well, I voted essentially just on sovereignty. No, but hang on, what, what am I wrong about? I think you're wrong it, that everybody uh, votes in the, <laughs> the same thought pattern. Never said that. And that... Well, I think some people voted for sovereignty, Actually, some no. people thought they were supporting parliamentary democracy, some people were just spooked by immigration, some people believed the lies about the economy, some people actually thought they'd be better off. There you go, there's five. Okay, right. Maybe I should start over. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe um, the country should. <laughs> Essentially, I voted purely on sovereignty. What does that I mean? I don't like the idea of, you know, when I go and vote for my member of parliament in the general election, or a European I know election. Point that 
yes, but then the commissioners make the laws, and then all the commissioners the are elected. Com commissioners are elected or appointed the by European the Parliament. Parliament. Yeah, which you have a vote in. Essentially, there is some democracy within the European Union, but it's relatively devolved compared to our own system of government. Our own system of government that will vote on the terms of Brexit without any MPs having any input whatsoever. Well, I'm not sure about that. How is that sovereignty? No. Theresa May gets to write the deal with David Davis and Boris Blinking Johnson, and MPs don't have any say in it whatsoever. How is that delivering you your sovereignty? Well... I mean, if we're talking about... Did you vote to leave the single market? Did you, did you vote to leave the single every market? every single small decision. Every single small decision? Did you vote to well, leave yeah, the single I mean, market? Somebody has to do something. Oh, mate, don't make me you ask you again. A, did you vote to leave the single market? If you vote for a member market? of Parliament, James, if you vote for a member of Parliament, you will vote for them to make decisions on your behalf. Well, no, not after Brexit, because they're going to have to do the opposite of what they think is best for the country, thanks to people like you. Well... <laughs> vote on the issue of sovereignty is so I can maintain my democratic rights. So I have the choice to decide. No, you don't. I'm not devolving my decision to a large group of individuals. Who a par may parliamentary democracy. May you, you've just defined it correctly. A parliamentary democracy. You elect MPs to vote in the best interest of their constituents. The result of Brexit means that a majority of them have to do the exact opposite. You have personally undermined the very thing you said you voted for. And I'll just ask you one more question. Did you vote to leave the single market? Not necessarily. No. Ah, well, they say you did. David Davis said well, yesterday everybody different. knew. No one ever said you could possibly there's, there's stay in. Plenty, there's plenty of things about the European Union. They're great ideas, like the single market, like the free movement of labour. They're great ideas. Well, we're, we're out of both of them. They work in practice. We've lost both of them. John, just, just out of interest, how will sovereignty keep people's children warm this winter? Well, hopefully people will make sure they have jobs and money to keep their homes and look after their children. Right. I mean, in 16 the million term, people with less than 100 term, quid in the bank. How, how is sovereignty going to put food on the table for them? I don't think it would be to do with necessarily having a decision to remain in the European Union. So you don't, you don't think the right. tanking pound is linked to the decision to leave? Well, the pound is tanking because there's obviously not any sort of... Um, <laughs> You still there, mate? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, it's you, you, you were about to explain why the tanking pound has nothing to do with the decision to leave the European Union. Well, no, it is directly linked to the reason for us leaving the European Union because they lose faith in the currency, therefore... Well, then I have to ask you again how, how the sovereignty you voted for is going to put food in people's fridges because this Because I'm Christmas. not just talking about the now. Oh, OK. There's less money in my All pocket right. now. I'm looking okay. towards the future. Yes. And maybe in the future, this country will end up in a better econo economic standpoint and we'll have sovereignty. And in the future, the European Union won't become larger and less democratic. Yeah, okay. Be able to play a small part in the decision that govern. Yeah. With the European Union in the future... John, you're not even convincing yourself, are, mate. You're not even convincing yourself. What <laughs> chance have you got of convincing me? Well, I like to think I... I don't think you do, John. Myself. I don't know about you, James. You're obviously quite set within your own opinion. No, I'm just talking about facts. I'm talking about the price of I petrol, I'm talking about the price of food, I'm talking about the exchange rate of the pound, and I'm talking about things that people actually said in the run-up to the referendum. And I'm also talking about the fact that you are leaving the single market, John, and you are seeing a cessation of freedom of movement, and you are seeing a diminishment in the income and wealth of every single citizen in this country, and you are saying to them, hey, but yeah, sovereignty. Hey, but yeah. Hey, but yeah, sovereignty, yay, sovereignty, can't afford to fill the car with petrol, can't afford to fill the fridge with food, can't afford to go out for a meal, can't afford to take the kids to the cinema, can't afford this, can't afford that, but sovereignty, what does sovereignty mean? Sovereignty is about self-determination. Well, our parliament isn't going to get a say on what Brexit looks like, and a majority of MPs didn't want to do it. So just explain to me, finally, John, how that even begins to resemble parliamentary democracy. All right, essentially, voting on sovereignty because... I want to have a say in democracy and how I'm going. I think you misheard me. I, di I didn't say do your best impression of a stuck record. I said explain to me how MPs being forced to vote against what they believe to be best for their constituents somehow represents a return of sovereignty. It's 11.45. And um, anyone who's been kind enough to ring me and attempt to defend their decision to vote to leave the European Union, uh, you should know you are now, we've now reached the point where everybody who hasn't got the guts to ring in claims that the calls are vetted deliberately to put on people that can't make a powerful argument. That, that's where the box of trolls goes.
at approximately this point in proceedings. I haven't got the guts to ring him. He'll turn me to shreds. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm just a bit racist, and I've managed to segue that into a vote to leave the European Union. And people come on with the guts and the kindness and the decency to, to attempt to argue their position. Sometimes I'm a little brutal with them, but you'll allow me a tad of brutality, I think, given that the country's heading towards a cliff. And all the people who haven't got the guts to ring in then start queuing up to say, oh, they're deliberately putting through bad callers. Come on then, guys. Fill your boots. Alex is in Birmingham. Alex, what's going on? Uh, hi, James. Um, I'm a young person, 24, don't earn all that much money. And obviously today I've just found out that, you know, I'll be earning even less comparatively to EU and countries, America. And it just makes, it think, it makes you think that it'd be far more attractive to start looking at working abroad. And I know a couple of my other friends are in the same position. One of them's gone to New York already. And you start thinking the brain drain that UKIP and everyone used to talk about happening in Hungary and Bulgaria and other places and people coming over to this country, particularly with student loans going up as well, is going to start going in the other direction. And all of a sudden we'll end up with sort of fewer qualified um, or just generally fewer British people in this country because more people will try and make their way abroad. Except, of course, that freedom of movement is about to come to an end. So the places where you could head in order to improve your future and enhance your life will be reduced. Unless, of course, the European Union decides that they want to take more, um, you know, qualified British people, more university educated people and sort of makes a way for us to be able to get into the into, you know, European countries, American countries slightly more easier. Well, anywhere in the world, really. I know what it's like to sort of to work at, uh, abroad. I worked in Austria for, a, you know, about a year and a half and had a, a really good time over there and kind of think, well, if the euro is going to be worth a lot more than the pound, it sounds like a sensible suggestion to start going back. But then you kind of, you feel really guilty about that because I've got, I mean, my dad works in the care industry that you've mentioned earlier yeah. and doesn't earn all that much money from that. My mum's self-employed. I don't know what her pension status is, but I don't know if it's that much. And you kind of think, on the one hand, I've got a, you feel almost tied in by a typically older population who voted to, to leave to sort of stay here and, and make sure that you can support them and, and make sure that there's pensions for our um, population that's getting ever older and yet people on the to look hand, after them people to look after them not yeah, just the money you need the people no, as well the, the, the unskilled migrant who actually populates the care home we've given them a kicking for yeah. driving wages down as well yeah, absolutely. And, and and yet at the same time, you think, well, you know, my job involves a lot of driving. Petrol's about to go up. I don't earn that much anyway. I could earn comparatively more if I started looking at jobs abroad. What is there to stay for, particularly? And so Sovereignty, you, you, mate. You, Sovereignty, feels, Alex. Yeah, but I mean, it's guilt. And we've got our country back. You've got your country here, back, Alex. What are you moaning about? Yeah, but I don't. That's the problem. I had what I thought was my future mapped out. I liked the idea that I could have gone to Europe to work. As I said, I took advantage of it and really enjoyed it. I came back because I had a better job opportunity here. But you always you had that sense of freedom, that sense of, well, if I wanted to, I could go to Europe. And I could, you know, make a life for myself over there for a bit before coming back again. And maybe I'd have a lot more skills if I could go and work in France languages. or Germany or Austria as I did. I'd, have, I'd pick up languages. I'd pick up connections. I'd have contact. There'd be all of these things that I could take advantage of. And then all of a sudden, sort of, you know, that, that fateful morning as it was for me, woke up, checked my phone and thought, oh, crikey, the door's been shut. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I don't have anything to cheer you up with, really. You won't be surprised to hear. I don't, I don't know what the yeah, argument no, is. I mean, it's... it's I've been listening to the show since the start and, and nothing that you've managed to come up with has, has, has done a great deal. But I just kind of, a lot of the people who are ringing up seem to be a little bit older. Um, and I just thought, you know, why not ring up as a 24-year-old and try and say, hey guys, the conversation is also about us. And I, I can only talk from my limited group John, of John Johnny Bristol sounded, sounded about your age. I could have been wrong. It's always hard to tell with Tom Bro. And, and the, I mean, the generational thing is relevant because, of course, you're going to have to live with the consequences of this decision potentially for another 60 years. An awful lot of people who voted to get out are going to have to live with it for, for, for well, months. They're probably not even going to see it. And, and that's sad. I'm not suggesting that there's anything powerful about this observation, simply that the people who have to live with the consequences were a lot more um, likely to vote to remain in. Yeah, I don't think you can lie with the demographics and, and the way that it came out. It's just a, a shame that a lot of people seem to have, to have voted the way that they did. And as you've, you've pointed out, it's sort of like it, Murdoch took my future. <laughs> well, there you go. That's, that's our headline. It's, and it is. I was about to say before Alex delivered that apocalyptic conclusion. Alex, take care, mate. I did things, we'll find something cheerful to talk about tomorrow, I promise. But it's the, it's the media that's done this. It's journalists. That's why I get personally so frustrated, because it's friends and colleagues of mine who've done this, who've taken the money 
and sold the tickets for the ghost train and actually encouraged people to punch themselves in the face. You can spot them very easily. Um, it, it would be, for example, every time it's pointed out that there's a shortage of money in, in the public sector, what you do, you say, oh, well, let's not spend any on foreign aid then. It's like when my eldest was six years old and she got a £10 note for her birthday and we spent it and then she asked if she could spend it again and again and again. Can I spend that £10 that Grandma gave me again? That's what it's like. These, these people who, who actively encourage you to act against your own interests. Every single time there is a, a, an economic problem in this country, instead of addressing it and holding the politicians responsible for it, you just say, oh, why are we spending all that money on foreign aid? The answer is simple, by the way. Foreign aid is an investment. Foreign aid is not charity. Foreign aid is, is, is a way of being at the front of the queue when the mineral rights come up for grabs or when there's an opportunity to build a power station. It's probably not a best example for Britain, actually, seeing as we have to pay the Chinese and the French to do that now. But if there's a, a mine to be dug or a, or a hospital to be built, then foreign aid means that your country is at the front of the queue. But if you haven't got any arguments politically and you're in the business of selling tickets for the gold train, ghost train, you use foreign aid as a way of saying, oh, yes, well, wow, why aren't we giving old people this money instead of giving it to Ethiopians. Ah, that's, that's how you do it. It's great. Absolutely bogus. But it's great. The other thing you can do, of course, is say, why are we helping other people when we should be helping ourselves? And then when you turn the conversation around to the vulnerable, the poor, the needy, the underpaid, the unemployed, the exploited, the food bank visitors, that's not who you mean by our own. When you say we should be helping our own instead of foreigners, what you really mean is we shouldn't be helping anyone. Ever. We should be entirely selfish. Darren's in Saffron Warden. Darren, what made you pick up the phone? Oh, I've been listening to this Brexit argument since, uh, since it all began and just can't believe the way it's gone. And uh, I'm one of the beneficiaries, uh, James. I am by any measure uh, what you would call one of the better off. Uh, I run a manufacturing company in Saffron Warden. We employ 120 people. Um, this, the exchange rate has put a large chunk on the profitability of the firm this year. Um, so I should be I should be seen uh, about it. Uh, I was a passionate uh, Remainer because I believe that our economic future is to be part of the largest and richest trading bloc um, in the world. Um, <laughs> trying to to argue which, to which the response? No, I, I mean I hear you, <sighs> and, and now I have to think what's the response to this? If I was trying to sort of represent the other side of the argument, I have to say, oh yes, as a previous caller said, they're all yeah. sitting on the beach eating olives and drinking wine. <laughs> Well, that's pretty much where I'm personally off to, but I'm yeah. not exactly the one that everyone was trying to help, am, am I? No. Um, I mean, I, I'm in a fortunate position that, yeah, I can offload any increases that I get in my fuel or anything else because I'm selling in euros and I'm selling in dollars. I'm also buying in euros and I'm buying in dollars. So so I can, I can even it out for myself. But as for my employees and those people, many of whom have... Who've, uh, left their countries, left their families, left their homes, and made that journey across the continent of Europe to find a job. People like that, their petrol prices, their food prices are going up. And before people suddenly turn around and think, yeah, I'm just a t hard taskmaster paying them nothing, we pay between £8.50 and £11.50 for production jobs, which, you know, in this current uh, state in a manufacturing environment is not is not too bad, but I can't in Saffron Warden find love for money. British people who want a job enough to come and knock on our doors or apply for um, a jobs out of business. We had a, an increase of work during the first half of the year, and we needed another twenty five people. And I had to go an hour and a half away to Luton. To I've, got, I've got I've got I've got some new uh, Darren. You can tell by the rising crescendo in the background that we're short of time. But Mark Mark Harper, who's the Conservative MP for the Forest of Dean and a former chief whip has a suggestion. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, go on. He says, one way to increase the labour supply while still reducing immigration is to provide more opportunities for British disabled people who want to work but don't get the chance. Yeah, tell them to come and work on some of my machines and we'll see how that goes. And that is a sitting member of Parliament. Oh, go on, let's do another half an hour. And then we've got Anna Subri joining us in the studio. And you have a choice. You either ring me and say why it's not bad that we're all going to be worse off as a direct result of voting to leave the European Union and that the tide will come back in soon. Or, I don't know, I don't know what other... What, how else do you hang on to the idea that you haven't done something silly? That you haven't been misled and conned by people who'll spend more on a bottle of wine at lunch than you spend on your weekly shopping? I don't know. And, and why? Why can't I stop talking about it? I, honestly, hand on heart? 
Because if we don't point out the massive contract that's been undertaken this time, what's to stop the next one being even bigger? What's to stop the next contract being even bigger than this one? Notion that those who do not learn from history are condemned forever to repeat it has a second line that is often forgotten. Those who do learn from history are condemned forever to watch those who haven't learned from history forever repeating it. And, and that's why. I can shut up, get over it, the result is in. No. No. It's ridiculous. If I just sold you a cardboard box that had bricks in it and told you that it was a hi-fi or a set of brilliant speakers, then yeah, I would want you to shut up and just accept it and get over it. But I didn't. They did. They sold you a cardboard box with bricks in it, having told you it had a laptop and an iPhone inside. Of course they want you to sh shut up and get over it, deal with it, the result is in, you re-moaners, you re-maniacs. Yeah, but I've, I've, I've got a box full of bricks, I thought I was getting a hi-fi. Shut up, get over it, re These people have also got a box full of bricks and they thought they were getting a hi-fi. And they're so ashamed and embarrassed of it, they want us all to pretend it never happened. Or, and this is where the debate's gone today, they wanted bricks all along. Yeah, all right. I told you that you were going to get a box with a hi-fi in it. I told you you were going to get a box with a, with a state-of-the-art hi-fi and some lovely Denon speakers. But I'm even happier with the fact that I got a box full of bricks. When the van drove off and I opened the box and looked inside... You are familiar with this con trick, aren't you? It's not just me that this has happened to. When a transit pulls up alongside the road and a bloke goes, Hello, mate, I've just done a delivery. I've got some amazing speakers left over in the back of the van. They're worth two grand, but you can have them for 200 quid. You think, wow, blimey. And then when you show the speakers to someone who knows what they're doing, they're just wooden boxes with a magnet inside. Uh, it cost about 12 quid to make. And that's what we've done now. Huge amounts of effort. 82% of the newspapers, broadcasters coming out of your ears. Everywhere you turn, people saying, well, vote leave, vote leave, vote leave. So you did. You bought the box. Now, find out it's full of bricks. And they say, oh, yeah, but bricks are good for you. Mervyn King today saying, no, a devalued pound, pound plummeting. It's very good. It was overvalued anyway. Hey, you haven't got enough bricks. Yeah, but I thought I was getting a hi-fi. Shut up! Just get over it. You can't stand democracy. I, I, I like democracy. I just like hi-fis more than bricks. You told me I was getting a hi-fi. I've got a box full of bricks. Who do I complain to? All the people that told me I was going to get a hi-fi, they've disappeared. They've fled the scene. And now I've got a Prime Minister, Theresa May, saying that those um, who are still a little befuddled by this whole project, they're bewildered by the decision of 17 million people. She said it on the conference stage. They're bewildered by the decision of 17 million people. Yeah, I'll tell you why, Theresa. Because the Home Secretary, who I thought was quite a solid politician, said that to leave the European Union would be an act of self-harm. Her exact words were national security would be compromised and we would all be worse off. So when 17 million people chose to make themselves worse off and to compromise national security, according to the Home Secretary, that's bewildering, isn't it? You stand there and you say, if you do this, you will compromise the security of the nation and you will be worse off. And then you do it anyway. How can you not be bewildered by that? Prime Minister stands on stage as so, and these sneering metropolitan elites find it bewildering that 17 million people voted to leave. <clears throat> it is bewildering that 17 million people would do what their own Home Secretary told them, would compromise national security and leave them all worse off. Can you remember the name of that Home Secretary? Theresa May. Steve's in Egham. Steve, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Um, I think... Part of the problem was that the, the European Union effectively like stopped convincing people um, that it uh, had any interest in, in the little man, you know, and globalisation uh, had left people behind. And yeah, they'd have loved to show you that, but no, no newspaper in this country would have printed it. Well, I mean, I think I think part of the problem is that it, European Union doesn't seem to function, or because uh, you're getting your information from the British coherent. media. You're getting your information it from has, the British media. Well, I mean, not really. And if you look at Eastern Europe and how they've rejected things like accepting refugees and some of the social that's what we've done. that came with the European Union. That's what we've done. Yeah, but we haven't actually had a vote like Hungary has, um, you know, and, and effectively uh, gone against what the EU has decided. You know, the rules... We have. We voted to leave it. Yes, we I, I agree with you. We are turning yeah. into one of these Eastern Bloc countries that grew up behind the Iron Curtain and is terrified of foreigners. You're, you're absolutely right. That's what we're turning into. 
I mean, actually, what, what I mean is there isn't a cultural sort of thread that runs through the whole of the European Union anymore, where it used to no, be... No, there, there, there is. Freedom. Okay. <laughs> Just, w- I mean, if, I, if I asked you, where would you uh, go in Britain to get a, a positive, warm account of what the European Union's done for you? Where would you turn media-wise? Um, the Independent, The Guardian. The Independent's gone under. Well, yeah, but I mean, uh, uh, before it had gone under. The Guardian, um, the Guardian does not dedicate much of its newspaper the to... The BBC. Pardon? The no, BBC. B- BBC, I mean, is, B- BBC is absolutely tying itself in knots to be impartial on all of these issues. Yeah, I mean, from my, my perspective, on a lot of people getting their news from social media, it was all Good pretty God. positive. I mean, I, I, I personally voted out, and it was after listening to you for years and years and having the same arguments, uh, like in the warehouse with my colleagues about immigration, and then that question you always used to ask about which law you used to hate. Yeah. But as it got closer up to the vote, and I looked at some of my own arguments about, yes, it's the biggest trading block in the world, but it, it's incapable of making trade deals. Um, you know, the where, way do, that, where do you get that from? It's incapable of making trade deals. We're, we're going to have to rewrite hundreds that they've got in place well, in already. The, the last trade deal they made was with Canada. That's fallen apart. No, it's it not hasn't. Made a trade deal with India. It has. No, it hasn't. Uh, TTIP fell apart, which may not have been a bad thing. I mean, there are there is basically an ideology uh, ideology around Europe, which is a great idea, yeah. but I don't think it works. So, but how how, how long anything. are you going to be worse off for? Um, well, I probably won't be. I mean, I'm I'm not. So very you don't busy. get paid in pounds. Um, at the moment, I'm a full time student, and I've got a, a private income, so I won't directly. Your private income isn't so. in pounds. You, you oh, don't. Yeah, you don't is, buy food I mean, that's been imported. You don't buy any. You don't buy any electronic hardware that has been uh, sold to, into this country by dollar-run companies. Um, well, yeah. I mean, you're not, you don't use petrol in your car. You don't, you, do, you don't use petrol in your car. You don't use petrol in your car. It's not going to be. It's not going to be as significant as. Um, no, well, that's fine. I'm happy for you, but I'm not. I'm not talking about you today. I'm talking about people who haven't got people who haven't got private incomes. How are they going to keep warm this winter? I don't think it's actually going to come to that sort of uh, level of people being out on the streets because of the EU vote. No one said out on the streets. Five five pence. Five pence. Do you know when you see a petrol station, you probably don't know this with your private income, but you know when you see a petrol station and it's got a really long (laughs) queue outside of Morrison's quite often, and then there's a petrol station a mile down the road that hasn't got a long queue outside. Do you know why that is? Uh, because there's different petrol prices at different petrol stations. P- people will drive people from will one side of the town a, a, to the other to save a penny a litre. They'll save a penny yeah. a litre. They'll drive from one side of town to the other. But you're all right, mate. Yeah. That's fine. You're not going to be affected well, by it, yeah, with we, your private we, income. But if you, I mean, if you believe that the European Union is actually doing any of the things it sets out to do, if it's not uh, maybe... I mean, you look at somewhere like Greece as well, which got con well, who, who basically got conned into the European Union. These arguments, are, these arguments don't work anymore. Well, why not? I mean, because we're worse been, off out than we were in. So you can point yeah, at Greece are, or Spain, and, and with your private income, we're worse off. And the less you've got, the more it hurts. The less you've got, the more it hurts. The European project as a whole is it helping everyone in Europe? Is it coherent? Is it actually going to? <laughs> improve the lives of people Britain, you know, in places like Britain that. is I mean, worse off as a result of voting to leave and we haven't even left yet so you can bang on all you want about Greece and Spain and all the other stuff the bottom line is the pound in your pocket and it's worth less James is in Kingston James what have you got yeah, good morning, James. Hello, James. Um, James, I just, I just, I just wondered. Um, uh, some of my neighbours now are, are calling me um, racist, and um, I just wondered um, uh, whether you actually would think that I was a racist. I, I mean, don't know you, James. Oh, Oh, I know. I just want to tell you something. I mean, you, you, you run your show on facts, James, and the facts are that all the way through the Leave and the Remain campaign, you actually said that you was, didn't know what you was voting. And now you're actually having a go at people who may have been confused and just, just signed the leave, the leave vote. That's a good I point. How you, I how, wonder how you can do that. I mean, I really do think that... No, uh, let, 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 let me clarify, James. Uh, what, what I said in the run-up was that my vote wasn't decided until quite close to the wire. And the thing that worried me, and oddly Dominic Cummings, who ran the Leave campaign, has come out and said he thinks they'd have won by a lot more if it wasn't for Farage and, and the sort of racist angle. What worried me was that I might 
might vote to remain because I found so many people on the Leave side repellent. But then I've met quite a lot of people on the Leave side who aren't repellent, including my child's godfather. So, I mean, th there was perhaps a slightly more nuanced attitude than you allow. And that line about every xenophobe and racist in the country voted to leave is true. But I have tied myself in knots and I have bent over backwards and I've done all those other things that one does to prove something that I do not believe that everybody who voted to leave was xenophobic or racist. I do believe that everybody who voted to leave has damaged their own financial situation, you included. Yeah, may I, may I just say something, James? I, what I believe you're actually doing there is you're actually you're actually now making excuses for for being confused. The no. same as the rest of us. The same as the lot of us was. We was confused. Oh, and, and when and I'm now, confused, I I, I, go, I go to experts. When, when I'm ill, I go to the doctor. Also, when I'm economically also, confused, James, I listen to the governor of the Bank of England. But why, also, why didn't you? James, but James, you also say on your program very regularly that it's best to leave it to the people, not the experts. Yes, because and we're having a conversation, James. A, a conversation involves lots of different views. The reason why you don't have experts on when you're discussing something like the economy is that they all agree. Now, James, if you don't mind me saying, you're very, very clever with words and you're very clever at, at changing situations to suit yourself. And I really do believe that Martin Clunes was so right about you. And also Frank Lampard as well, that you are, you are actually an idiot, James. And you're sitting there on your phone day after day. Yes. And all you're doing is having a go at people. No, mate, James, no, 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 James. It feels like that to you, but it's you're you, not. you punched yourself in the face, mate. I've never touched you. Anyway, you wanted no, me to, I'd... you wanted me to comment on whether or not your neighbours were right when they called you a racist. Well, right, yes, okay, you carry, you carry on and you, you, you. you that, that's you, why you rang in, isn't it? That uh, is, yes. Yes. I, I've no idea, James. Oh, uh, because I... Uh, have, have, uh, have, a, have a great day, mate. Well, in fact, get your, get, get your neighbours to ring me and, tell, and they can tell me why they think you... Why do you think they think you're racist, James? Neighbours are waiting in the queue now to talk to you. Why, why do you think they think you're racist? Uh, because I voted Brexit. No, you're lying now. Why am I lying? Well, no, no, you're, you're there's the no liar, link James. between being racist and yeah. voting Brexit. Why, why do they think and you're racist? One biggest, James, one of your biggest things what you talk about is racism, isn't it? And you're the, you're the friend, you know, you're the main person for, against racism. Am I right, James? No, mate. No, but can I just tell you something then, very quickly? No, mate, because you've rung in on the false pretenses. You lied to me in Paris, James. You lied to me. Well, you've lied Paris, to me now. You've used a false name. You, yes, I have. I know you who you are. I know who you are. Lied to me. Oh, yes, come lied here, to me. James. Paris. Come here. I don't know what your real name is, and I remember you when we lied. met. It, I remember when we met in Paris, and I remember how humiliated and embarrassed your poor wife looked when you marched up to me and started trying to pick a fight. But you are the man who phoned Nigel Farage, aren't you, and told him that he had to have a debate with me on the radio. My wife that was, was you, because I James. I cannot ever. I, I will never be able to thank you enough. You know that, don't you? I present Newsnight now, thanks to you, James. Is there any way... I can know. I send you a bunch of flowers or something? I've got my own show on ITV, right. I've got columns in the mirror, You're I've got a book deal, and it time. all Please started with you, me, James. Can, I, can you give me the address? Me, David oh, Dimbleby. James, mate. I'm a liar. You're a liar, James O'Brien. Your poor wife. You to my face. Your poor wife. My poor wife was only stopping me from throwing you in the water, James. Because she knows you're a violent racist liar, mate, and it took me five minutes to prove it. Threatening violence. I was with my children. I was with my children and your wife had to stop you. I was with my children. Yeah. I know, and that's the only reason you never win in the water. No, you just told us the reason, James. The reason was A, A, you couldn't even begin to have achieved that physically, and B, your wife stopped you. You pathetic little prune. Mark's in Wigan. Mark, what have you got to say? Hello, James. Hello, Mark. I wasn't going to call in, uh, but... Uh, uh, with you saying that everyone who voted leave has punched themselves in the face, I just had to uh, comment on that because um, in the long term, I don't think it is. I hope you're right. I it. really do. Um, well, there was a previous caller made a comment about our debt, saying our debt's more manageable with a smaller pound, which we seem sensible because we have a lot of debt. But also, um, having a cheaper pound means that manufacturers in the country are going to be able to manufacture more. Uh, because everything's cheaper. Well, hang on, unless they're buying it from overseas. 
And then it's considerably um, yeah, more yeah, expensive, yeah. about 20% more expensive. Yeah, the, the, the way they buy, and the way they sell, and the way it generally goes with global trade and manufacturing is that they can generally buy more things when the pound is a uh, lower value. But if they're buying it from overseas, they're paying more, Mark? Oh, yeah, 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 they would, they would be from overseas. But so what are they going to buy from within Britain if they're manufacturing? What, what raw materials do you think I'm, we produce? I'm, I'm not a manufacturer, James. All I know is that... Um, no, you don't have to be a manufacturer. You just have to have eyes. What raw materials do we produce in this country? Well, we're, we're, we're a bit backwards on that point. We've got loads of resources in our country that we don't use. We, we've just got some sort of um, import-export thing going on that, that's just not... Yeah, but the stuff, the stuff we're going to make, what are we going to make it out of? Um, I, I don't. I don't really know. But, right. uh, no, no, that, that, that's fine. You don't, it's not your job to know. But you probably shouldn't be ringing up telling me that everything's going to be great if you don't know how. Are we late for the travel news? Twelve nineteen. And that's where it all started. That fella, James. I don't know what his real name is in Kingston. That's where it all began. That's the the the, the, the curious turn that my career has taken over the last couple of years. All down to him phoning up LBC on someone else's show and saying, "Mr. Farage, you've got to challenge James O'Brien." So he did. And we all know what happened next. I do owe him, but I do think threatening someone physically when they're on holiday with their children is uh, probably a bit beyond the pale. I certainly wouldn't imagine that anybody who uh, uh, disagrees with me on the Brexit vote, or indeed on anything else, would want to be on the same side as, as that thug. Carl is in Taunton. Carl, what would you like to say? Hi. All right, James. Uh, listen, I've never phoned up a station before, but you've wound me up. Yes. So... Uh, if you just bear with me a sec, because I'm not as articulate as you, so I'll just say it as it is. You know, you don't have to like it. You don't have to accept it. But it's happening. Maybe it doesn't affect you, people competing for your jobs. There is, I can guarantee that it's nobody knocking on the door of your bot saying, I'll do James's job for five or six thousand pound a year less. Of course there are. That's what's happening. That, hold on, that's what's happening. Well, with hang on a minute. I, I, of course there are. No, there aren't. Yes, there so are. Guy, All you've got to be able to do is speak English. You could ring him now and ask for my job, Carl. Oh, OK. So, guy, some, some guy from Lithuania's got a phone up and he's going to know all about British politics. He's got doesn't to have to be from Lithuania. He could be from Liverpool. All he's got to be able to do is speak. All right, don't be a prat. Let me get it out. <laughs> so, so, what happened then? No, no mate, if you're going to say something, first of all, I'm not going to insult I, you, but you I just... No, 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 no. You, you can't come on the radio and tell lies. Do, all you do is talk over people and just just give me a second, because this is difficult for me well, to Well, don't get tell out. another lie, all right? Hey? Don't tell another lie and I won't interrupt you. I don't, I don't know what planet you're on. Let me finish anyway and then we'll discuss that later. So... Let's forget the guy from Lithuania or Latvia. Say an Eastern European guy. He's not knocking on your door because he doesn't have the British political skills. He doesn't know about past uh, British history. He doesn't know about how things go on in this country. You're, you're going to be worse off. No, well, it doesn't matter. Sometimes It matters like, to me. We're paying the trade It matters off. to me. James, let You're me going to be it worse off. Well, let me tell you why I'm happy to be worse off. Okay. I'm taking a chance. I'm taking a chance. It's going to take two years for us to be out. It doesn't matter anything about sovereignty. The people of this country that are having their jobs threatened because people want to do money. They're going job. to be worse Hold off. On, Hold on, James. Just because people want to do my job for six grand less. <sighs> what good is that to me? What you are going to be worse off. Even that six I'm grand is going to be worth James. less. I'm already worse You're paying off. more for petrol, you're paying more for food, you're paying more for shoes, you're paying more for clothes. I'm, James, I'm prepared to pay. You're not letting me speak. Uh, mate, you've what? spoken a lot more than I have during this conversation, Carl. Just let me get to this point. Okay. I've decided, and the people of this country have decided who voted Brexit to leave, have said, OK, we know it's going to be tough. No, they told you that it wouldn't be, Carl. Hold on, James. No, I won't hold on, Carl, because you've told another lie, and I said I'd interrupt if you did. You were told your life would get better. I've heard what you've said, and you've said the same thing to me that you said to everybody else. Because Listen, it's true. One important point. Go Just on. let me get it out, and then you can get back on your big chair. Listen, the people of this country have said, those that voted leave, 
they know it's going to be tough, but they're prepared to pay the trade-off. They're going to say, it's going to be tough these two years. Two but years? Where are you getting two years from? Hold on. No, I won't, I won't hold on. I mean, you've come on my radio show, you've called me a prat, and now you think you get to make the rules up as you go along. Two things. You are going to be worse off. My job is up for grabs to anybody who can speak English. And thirdly, <sighs> they told you you would be better off out. And you believed them. For you to turn around now and say, I knew all along I was going to be worse off, that's pathetic, Carl. No, it's not that. We're prepared to make the wait, we're prepared to go short term, but it's to get better long term. <sighs> well, I we wish I'd let, well then let's part, let's part in agreement that I hope it gets better in the long term, but we're not going to agree that you, you genuinely believed it was going to get better in the short term because they told you, for example, that we'd have 350 million quid a week to spend on the NHS immediately. Do you still think that was true? Well, I'm not interested in that. Okay, I well, I am, and that's kind of what the conversation has been about. The campaigns before the referendum and the reality afterwards. Would you like to apologise for calling me a prat? Because I think you let yourself I down. That, no, I knew that was a lie. I didn't worry about that. Well, because uh, I a lot of people didn't know it was a lie, Carl, and I'm speaking up for them. Well, listen, I'm speaking up for me, and the well, reason And that's why great. You speak up for you, and I'll speak up for people who got lied to and didn't realise. And everyone's a winner. But I won't call you names, Carl, because I think you let yourself down. Jules is in Worcester. Jules, what would you like to say? Hello, James. <sighs> this is tiring, isn't it? Tiring I mean, for you? What do you think it's like for me? You know, I've been listening this morning, uh, I mean, this is just a bit of an aside, but, it, you know, the how could you be sold such a pub? Is, is almost a question worthy of mystery hour. Yes, it is. It is, but we and wouldn't I, have time. And I've had more laugh-out-loud moments, I think, in the last hour and a, and a bit, however long it's been going on now, than, Three. than, than I've had listening to mystery hour ever since I started. <laughs> Come on, I'm late uh, for the news. What did you ring in to look, say? The reality is this. Look, I have a business. Would you like to you call may, me a name first? You, you may know. Uh, no names. No pack drill. Go on, none, then. none of that. None of that. Um, I, I call you James. All right, then. Um, so, I have a business. We import goods. You made a very good point. We import our raw materials from the EU, as it happens, um, in euros. Uh, we re-transform them here, we do stuff to them, then we re-export them all over the world. So this, you know, this, this nonsense that we're not trading with the rest of the world, I can, I can, I can disprove mm. for, a, for a start. The one thing is this, you know, we, we've had our costs increase dramatically, 20 odd percent at a stroke. And so the only one thing I'll take issue with you on is when you say you're going to be worse off, you're wrong. We are already no. horrendously worse off. But Carl doesn't us. mind. You not mind, but you know there is a there is a. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of kind of I suppose you'd call it commercial illiteracy out there, and I think the amount of emotion and, and everything else. I recount a really quick story. I know you're going to the news, but on, on the weekend I went into a shop to buy something locally here. Small shop, met a guy, know him not know him well, but know of him. See him when I walk the dog. Nice fellow, reasonable guy. As I was taking the money out to pay for this thing in the hardware store, 50 euros came out of my wallet, which I had from when I was on holiday last year. And as, you know, jokingly, I said, would you like to take some euros instead? They're worth more than pounds at the moment. Yeah. This guy looked at me and he said, um, I don't want your foreign money. He said, in fact, we need the foreigners out and they can take their foreign money with them. And in five years, the whole EU will burn down because we're going to destroy it. So euros will be worth it. I think he rang me earlier, didn't he? <laughs> Him and his three brothers. It was a... It was, it was the most bizarre moment, and it illustrated for me where the whole narrative and the whole debate on this has gone. I'm living through the, and battling against what's happened to the pound right now, as many other people I know. I'm off to do a trade show in the EU this week, where I'm going to be there a week, flying the flag, doing my very best, but knowing that actually we are really hurting that. And a lot of businesses on, it's about time people understood that. Whether they will. But they don't want to. And, and frankly, in a way, you can't blame them, because the truth is terrifying. And, and uh, Jules, I'm cracking on. I'm late for the news. Can we do all this again tomorrow, please, James? That's from Andrew in West Drayton, and I'm afraid, Andrew, no, I haven't got the energy. So, look at the rail track at what happens next, and uh, obviously, as I've demonstrated to you today, there are clearly some very angry people out there still convinced that voting to leave the European Union was, was the right thing to do. And I think everyone can agree, we, we hope the economic circumstances improve, however you voted. But... It seems to me that if things don't get better, there are two arguments that the Leave side are going to make. One is, well, any minute now, the whole European Union is going to come crashing down around their ears, so it's a good job we were out. Let's even imagine that that were true. I think most people would agree that if the, if, if the European Union did come to harm, then Brexit would have been a key part of that. So it doesn't justify the decision to leave the fact that what you left behind may have suffered.
when it was your decision to leave that caused the suffering. So just look out for that. That'll be next. The whole EU is going to come crashing down. So we were right to leave. And the second one is the one I find, well, I suppose looking at the situation in America at the moment, we shouldn't be surprised by anything that, 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 that democracy delivers. The second one is that somehow the people who said there could be economic trouble ahead will be the same people who are responsible for the economic troubles. That's, a, that's where we are now. Oh. Mark's in Loughton. Mark, what have you got? Hi, James. Hello, Hi. Mark. I, I actually have been resisting uh, calling for quite a while. Are you going to attack me? Because I think um, Caroline, I must have done something to upset Caroline in the, yesterday. In, in, in the city, we've been hit very, very hard with the fall in the value of the dollar. Uh, there's a shortage of about 45,000 senior developers, and we're already finding now that the uh, developers coming from Eastern Europe, who instantly can't be replaced, obviously, by uh, UK people, are really feeling uncomfortable um, and really saying, look, you know, we're feeling we're not, we're, you know, we're not welcome. Um, I'm seeing, uh, you know, this, this is not about the next two years. This is the next 10, 20 years. Um, I was talking with a, with a historian um, who happened to... Uh, Bloody expert. ...happened to say to me uh, that if, if we look back on history, Cameron's decision to call a referendum may be looked on as being the, um, you know, possibly the worst decision... Uh, made by any Prime Minister in the last hundred years, or possibly even in history. Um, and the final bit is I've had a lot of... I was trying to think of a worse one. ...been in touch with me because of comments perhaps I've made on social media saying they regret having voted Brexit. They now realise the truth. And I'm sure if there was a if there was a poll taken tomorrow, a proper poll, a cro uh, you know, and a big poll, I think we'd find that it wasn't 48 percent. I think the Remain camp may well be now in the lead. Well, you might be right. Uh, of course, you also I have to just have glance in my box of trolls. You can have this one, Mark. Um, I'll pretend he said Mark in Loughton rather than James O'Brien. Typical London liberal establishment type. He really doesn't understand the real world and the wider country. You can hear some heckling in the background. It's the Conservative MP Anna Subri who uh, sort of has emerged in recent weeks, Anna, as something of a of a maypole for distressed remainers. They're all dan <laughs> they're all dancing they're around dancing you. Around. Who is that lovely man that I just heard? I found out, is he my brother? This isn't the BBC. We just have ordinary people ringing in. We don't, we don't, have, we don't, we don't have them queuing up to provide us with their expertise. What a great guy! What's going on? I don't know. What's going on? I sometimes wonder what has happened to our country. I, I think there's a. And it's very. It's, it's you know. I'm not an. Um, an MP for London. I'm from Nottinghamshire. I'm Notting Nottinghamshire through and through. So we've got to be very careful because London is our great capital city and it is very different from the rest of the country. But I think there is... So in, in London, it, there's a lot of shock and there are a lot of people saying, oh my goodness me, how are we going to cope with this? But out, it, I, I call it the real world and I don't mean to be rude to no, London. Of course, right? of course. Okay. But I think even out in great places like where I'm from, and as I say, born and bred, I think people are now very worried. And there are, and that's why you know, it's a lot of what your last caller said was true, because there are a lot of people who are saying, I'm not sure actually that I made the right, or I ever voted in the right way then. But he is also right. We made a promise that if you voted out, you'd get out. So if we don't do that, I think that would be very wrong, truthfully. But nobody knows what out means. That's what's know, so, so strange at the moment. I know there's a very good argument, and I know it's a Ken Clark argument, and I'm seeing him later on. We should never have done it in the first place. Something this complicated should never have been put to the British public. And I know, again, that there's a lot of truth in that. But we are where we are. And we learn from these mistakes. Uh, but as I say, we are where we are. It's and we have to make the best of it. It's not massively reassuring. We are where no, we I'm are so and we have sorry. to make the best of it. You well, were supposed we to be providing us with the, with the roadmap to a peaceful future, oh, Anna Subri. I can give you Go that. On, We've got to stay a member of the single market. Well, but you know that David Davis has said that categorically that's not going to happen. No, actually, he didn't say that. Oh, I beg your pardon. He, no, he didn't. He said it was, he said it, he said it was very improbable. Okay. And then the Prime Minister said, uh, no, that's his view. That's not the view. And that's one of the things we... I know, but that's one of the things we need to clear up. The problem is... And this is the, the, the problem that's happened. If you, if you extrapolate from the question that was on that ballot paper, in which we know 52% of people voted leave for, if you start to take from that stuff that wasn't on that ballot paper, you're going to get yourself into trouble. So what's said is everybody wanted to control immigration. Actually, if immigration was the determining factor in your leave vote, mm. actually what you really meant was you want less. Yes, of course. Right? You want yes. less. Yes. So again, you see... Fewer. 
Fewer, so. <laughs> well, fewer immigrants, less immigration. You see, you're much more better, better, educated, talking better educated. Don't you start? Don't what? you start? I've had enough of that today. Come but <laughs> in all seriousness, though, so this is the huge problem that we have when we start to we we start to read stuff in without any proper basis to it. So if you're determined that you're going to reduce the number of people coming into this country then you're not going to be able to and take control this you know control immigration actually we do control immigration in this country but in in, in some newfangled way which nobody seems to have worked out yet then you can't be a member of the single market mm. for me membership of that single market is the sacrosanct thing because that will keep on delivering prosperity growth and jobs and if we start to mess about with immigration which as i say we do control this country will get it as that your brilliant caller said well, you're, you're making it very clear you don't listen to this program on a, on a regular basis no, I it's, don't, my, my, well, I do it's not good enough well, you're probably listening to something down in the midlands instead aren't you like oh, wm oh, oh, but mark no, that was no, a no, normal caller for that was Maybe a normal, normal caller for us my new best all friend. our callers are like that except the ones who are threatening to throw me into the seine what? although quite why he couldn't have thrown me into a good british river like the river thames i have no idea was he river choosing trent. a foreign or the river trent indeed come to the trent flowing through through nottingham so I mean, you, you are now in the same sort of team. You're on the same bus as people like Ed Miliband and Nick Clegg. Well, on th on, on one this issue, no, I know, one, yeah. I know, but it is probably the biggest issue facing the country. Yeah, th th there aren't any options here at the moment. We can talk about whether we leave that, but actually, in terms of in terms of the masts to which one can nail one's colours, there aren't any because you might not even agree on elements of what. No, the single market we do agree on. Right, so that's the big thing. So that's, your, your, that's your campaign, we thing. have to stay in the single market. And, and, but that and, becomes immigration then, because you can't stay in the, as you've said. And that's why I don't have a problem with it, because I don't, I'm not hung up on immigration. I know we've got to plan better. Mm. I don't have any debate about that. That's absolutely right. So if you go to towns like Boston, 15%. It's only 15%, actually, of EU workers yes. doing great job there. But people feel, well, hang on a moment, it's not been properly planned, we haven't got the right services, blah, blah, blah. That's the fault of politicians. Those things can be fixed. That's why we've got this. Absolutely. That's why we've got this, uh, this fund to make sure we do things better. Um, which was in Ed Miliband's manifesto. Which was also in Ed Miliband's. <laughs> Who cares, though? But you Can know I what? point something Don't else out? People uh, get fed up with all of that. Uh, probably they do. But I, I do. I, done remind, I was reminded yesterday that uh, I think it was Bernard Jenkin yesterday who was pretty explicit on coming out of the single market, actually, rather than David Davis. But I was reminded yesterday that the, the, the manifesto on which you fought the last general election, not just you, but all Conservative MPs, yeah. pledged, <laughs> pledged to remain in the single market, yeah, whatever so happened. Yes, to the single market. So, in terms of democracy and sovereignty, what, 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 what wins? Quite, the general election result or the referendum I, result? I agree with you. And these are these incredibly difficult conundrums and that's why people like myself and others many others want parliament to have these debates and actually to assist the government in getting through all this what we can't have is a very small group of people the three brexiteers doing this this terribly difficult thing without consulting with parliament having debates in parliament so that mps can put forward all their different views and why, so on why, and so why forth. do you think they won't do that I genuinely don't know, actually. Well, you're a bit closer to power than we are. Well, no, we, we, we asked David... I'm so sorry, I'm losing my voice. That's all right. We asked David Davis, they were trying to get to this yesterday. Um, Why they won't actually know. have debates? I think, you see, the PM says we don't want a running commentary. God, I don't want a running commentary well, I either. Mind, I wouldn't mind, do. actually, if it was, it was actually describing what was happening was, rather than but speculation. But you need to know what the principles are. Yes. You need to know the principles. I think the truth is, they haven't worked it out yet. That's the truth. And we, we want to help. So this is what you've got the here, is the team haven't worked out what well, they're doing. I don't think they have. But the cheerleaders are still shouting their heads off. Yep. Without knowing what the team is going to do. <laughs> Probably. And that's why Brexit means Brexit. She's right, the Prime Minister's absolutely right, so we've got to deliver it. And now we, that's why we want Parliament involved. Because remember, all your listeners can write to their MP. MPs do listen to the emails and the letters and what they're told when they go out and talk to people as they should be doing every weekend like I do and all the rest of it. I'm worried about your voice. We need to go to the travel news. Can, can, can we get Anna Subria Strepsil? Or indeed any other form of, uh, of, of cough? I'm on water. I'm very happy sweetness. with water. It's Are you very, sure? I'll get you yeah, a tune. I'm, it's very a tune good to say, Hey, Nottingham MP. Tunes advert. Circa 1984. Second class return to Dottingham, please. <laughs>
It's almost like was we that planned. Ed? It's almost like we planned. That was Ed made a bad <laughs> impression. No, it wasn't. It's twelve forty-six. A remarkable show today. Thank you for all the kind words, and thank you also for all the for for, for all the horrible ones too. Uh, you all you all count. You all pay the bills. But um, Anna Subri joins us for the for the closing minutes. A conservative MP and uh, a former minister. You didn't get a job off off Theresa May, did you? I did actually. Did she offer you something? Yeah. What did she, she offer did. you? She offered me a job in the Ministry of Justice, but I decided that in fact I'd, I'd made a decision back in March and February, February March time that if I didn't get a promotion, not being churlish or sure. anything, then I was going to go back on the back benches. And I'm really enjoying being back on the back benches because I never really was a proper backbencher, and it's good. So you I, mean I, that's I, the I, fun you can have, uh, the, well, the, the, I, I, the the trouble you can cause, rather than there's a little bit of that, but uh, I'd never admit it in public, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, but uh, it's it's the free. I love the freedom to speak, and I love actually doing the work for constituents. And I don't mean that just because you're all meant to say these things. I genuinely love it. Actually, it's great. I am. Um, I, I I think this is as good as a compliment gets from Jeff. Anna Subri talks quite a lot of sense for a Tory. What a nice man. That's yeah. my, another new friend of mine called Jeff. <laughs> Indeed. Um, I'm just going to take a call from Alex who's in, in Coleraine in County Derry and then, then I want to talk right. to you about, about where Parliament is left by this path upon which Theresa May has, has led, is leading. As Alex, what made you pick up the phone? What would you like to say? Uh, James, I very much regret having voted to come out of the EU. Very much so because now, having got better facts, I would certainly not ever vote to come out. I think I was sold a pup listening to certain individuals. Boris was one of them. Mm. Uh, how can we get out of this situation? I'm wondering, is the royal prerogative, would that play any part in this? There you go, Anna. That's just a little one for you to start off with. First I mean thing I'd say is write to your MP. I know that sounds corny, but do, because MPs read their emails, they read their letters, and if you feel strongly, you know, contact your MP, tell them what you think. But what's the point, given that the Prime Minister is apparently determined to consult them not a jot on what happens No, no, she, Theresa May, you know, d don't make any mistake about this. She listens to people, and she listens to the evidence and the arguments. The difficulty is is that we did say if you vote out, out means out. Yes. We did say that. And and I agree. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't catch that gentleman. Alex. Alex. I didn't... Um, I you, you know, he name. says... No, no, I know who you are. <laughs> it's good to be here, John. Um, no, seriously. <laughs> um, he makes a very good point about... You know this discussion which we're having about the single market? Yes. And I had a conversation with somebody, I can't say who, last night, who said, no, no, we had all this debate about the single market. And I said, look, I'm being rude. Most people don't know what the single market is. They don't sit there in the crown in beast and go, oh, I say, what about this single market? Mm. And also, when we talked about it, we talked about, oh, it's 28 countries that trade amongst... No, it's not. And that means nothing to ordinary people. They don't interested in countries trading. What does that mean? If you say to them, it's a very small business, right up some great big multinational light, and listen, who can make stuff and sell it without tariffs and custom duties in Bristol to Birmingham, just as they can to Berlin, Barcelona, Brussels, or wherever, then they begin to understand it. And, and it's our fault as politicians. Too many people were trashing, not me, I have to say, I've always believed mm. in our membership of the EU, for, for decades, bendy bananas and all this. Well, rubbish. it was funny when Boris started filing from Brussels oh, for, the, about for the Daily Telegraph. Well, I won't, although Alex did mention him by name. What was it, I mean, uh, rather than the individuals, Alex, what were the, what were the sort of arguments that persuaded you? Well, quite a, well, some did, but I think this immigration, they laboured that, the cost of it, uh, and, well, apparently that is, was always under control in any event. But they were dwelling on the immigration. Oh, we'll stop that. Uh, look at the money we'll save. When, <laughs> 350 well, million, Alex, wasn't it? A week. Yeah. <laughs> well, I admire, your, I admire your honesty. I think a lot of people feel like you feel, but uh, I'm not quite yet prepared to you say You can it, drop me an a email, Alex, and I'll pass it. Who's your MP? It was in Northern Ireland. Yeah, who is it? Oh, well, I have... <laughs> I don't say you don't know. I recently moved from London, in actual fact. Well, look, oh, okay. you can bang me an email and I'll, I'll send it on to your uh, MP without any problem at all. Because Northern Ireland, the people actually in Northern Ireland voted out. They uh, voted in, right? Yes. Well, remain. they're worried about the border, among other of things. Course and they again, are. There's, no cl there's no clarity on that either. No, and it's a very, No one knows what that's going to look really like. It's a really serious issue, actually. Well, I, I, I suppose if I'd just come back from Mars and I was looking at what had happened to the country since June, and, and even if I didn't have a dog in the race or feel particularly strongly about either side of the argument, if I just said, what's going to. We, we, we've arrived in a situation where decades of work put into bringing peace and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, pulling down a wall at the Northern Irish-Irish border, and no one's got a clue. No, you mean you can say black and white and orange and purple, no one's got a clue. 
about what's going to happen, right? The, the, the Irish, I, I genuinely don't know what the answer is there. I'm sorry, I, I, I wish I, I could. I'm, I know. I'm not expecting you to. I'd have been embarrassed if you did know, because I just said nobody knew. Gary's in Kingsbury. I, uh, last call on this, Gary. What do you want to say? Yeah, hi, James. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for letting me in uh, just in time. Um, yeah, I voted, um, I actually voted to stay in on the basis, I know it's a cliche, but on the basis that uh, uh, a world without borders is a better world. But um, I, I, I think purely based it's on the... It's not a cliche, economic, mate. It's not a cliche. Well, it's lovely. I wish it was. I wish there were uh, so many people well, saying it that yeah, it became yeah, a cliche. Yeah. All right, well, it, it, could be <laughs> perceived, it could be perceived as a cliche, put it that way. But um, anyway, um, but I actually think that, um, you know, purely in economic terms, um, I, I mean... Uh, the the whole economic argument, the whole the whole experiment with the uh, with with Europe is is totally flawed because, and particularly with a single currency, because it, the reason why we've done so well outside the EU is because we have we, because we've had a, had had the ability to uh, to um, uh, uh, control interest rates and our fiscal policy, and uh, the fact is is that you know the, as I think Professor what's his name from um, I can't forget it. Professor Walters. I mean, he said it's a half-baked policy, the introduction of the euro. And I actually think it's a conspiracy by the... It was a conspiracy by the French and the Germans, particularly the Germans, for the Greeks and the Spanish and who, uh, uh, whoever else wanted to buy their BMWs and Volkswagens in southern Europe. You know, so they would... To, to force it through, to bring in people who probably hadn't, hadn't wouldn't have properly qualified. Yeah, Goldman Sachs still they, accused they, of that. They, but, 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 so you, you, I, and I guess we should end with a little bit of optimism. So you can imagine, uh, economically speaking, you don't think we are necessarily staring disappointment in the no. face. No, not at all. Because the first, I mean, if you look at the fluctuation of the fluctuations of sterling when we got booted out of the ERM, for example, I mean, the the, the pound bounced back. And it's, it, you know, I mean, these fluctuations are in, a, in, a, in, a, in the world of e economics, these fluctuations are, uh, are natural. So, well, they're, they're looking uh, a little bit unprecedented at the moment, but I, I will buy what you're selling because I think you'd be daft not to. And that's really the point, isn't it, Anna Subri, is that when I used to interview Ed Balls about the economic figures, I was always struck by the thought that he must be hoping they're bad as Shadow Chancellor, it, it, almost as if it, you, you find yourself indulging in a form of masochism. So personally, we all want to be better off. Politically, you kind of want the other lot to fail, even when they're in charge. So no, we, we all want though. Brexit to work. We all want it we, to... We've got to make yes, it work. That's we just the, have no clue how it's going to happen, and nor do the we, people selling it. No, uh, and that's why you've got to hold people to account. And, you know, Boris, you know, Boris knows my views on this. Mm. I don't believe Boris ever actually in his heart wanted us to leave the EU. He did it for the wrong reason. Uh, and, you know, the, that's why he wasn't celebrating. And that's also why he said, when he wrote this piece for the, the, the Daily Telegraph, he said, the only change, we will extricate ourselves from EU sovereignty. Everything else was going to be exactly the same. So uh, I'm looking forward to having that debate with Boris in Parliament and asking him, what changed, Boris? I look forward to that as well. I suppose, in, in the meantime, as a closing thought, we, we can't really have the full debate. With between leave and remain until leave have decided what, what leave, leave is. Looks so like. Anna, Anna, I've got to go. She's right, poised Hello. imminently. Anna Subri, it's been a pleasure. Lovely, thank you, darling. Um,